Kate, we hope you are hungry for some men's Division I college basketball because we've got you covered serving up hoops action both on Monday and tonight. As the Lopes welcome in here to GCU Arena, the Trojans of Little Rock. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us here on Your View, Cox Channel 4. The Lopes looking to start the season at 3-0. Now, they weren't able to do that last year here at GC Arena, but they did back in 2015-16 when they started off on a 6-0 run. So, the Lopes hoping for more of the same. However, if you look back to last season, the Lopes are currently riding a five-game winning streak here at GCU Arena where they have won 16 of their last 17 games. To say they have home court advantage, well, that's uh, putting it mildly. Obviously, they have the Havocs on their side in this wild crowd that proves to be electric even when the students are home for the holidays. Well, the Lopes, they want to go out there and impress in all halves of the game. Last game, they did go on a 25-6 and six run over Robert Morris in the first half, but in the second half, they had a drought of 13 minutes where they weren't able to get a bucket to fall. So the goal tonight, to go out there and put together a complete game. We haven't put together a full game quite yet, um, but we, uh, we've got a lot to work on. We know what we need to work on, but like you said, we've uh, shown glimpses of, of some real good basketball, and. Um, hopefully, you know, that's what the beginning of the season is about, you know, kind of fixing those things that you're weak at, turning them into strengths, and um, putting it all together by the end of the season. We're young. We're young. I mean, we're going we to get it together one day, but I think we have to just come out in the second half. We play the first half really well every game. we got to come out in the second half ready to play and, I mean, just being prepared. I think that's our main goal, just being prepared. But the great Dan Marley demands perfection from the get-go. So that's what he'll be looking for in tonight's action. What will the broadcast team be looking for? Well, let's bring them aboard right now. Barry Bajel, Scott Williams, and guys, uh, we are excited for what's ahead tonight. But I know you've been uh, studying those notes. Tell the folks at home what's on tap. Well, it's going to be a tall task. Little Rock uh, played very tough at Memphis. They uh, actually led in the game by 14 at one point. The uh, Tigers came back and eventually won the game, but I think this is going to be a test for the Lopes. Yeah, they did a fantastic job with that basketball game. They established a ferocity on the defensive end, really had the Tigers frustrated. You mentioned the 14 points. They left for 32 minutes of that basketball game, but it's really been all about Grand Canyon, the mentality which they take the floor with. 75-61, victorious over Robert Morris. 48-28 at the half, as Josh Braun said, they need to put complete games together because they've led in, in both of their first two games, big leads in the opening half before succumbing to kind of letting up in the second. Yeah, it's human nature sometimes when you're up by 20 points to take your foot off the gas and uh, guys get a little complacent, maybe don't make the extra pass, thinking, oh, this is my opportunity to go a little more one-on-one -on -one basketball. We saw that big stretch where they didn't score a field goal for 13 minutes. How about Casey Benson? He didn't take his foot off the gas. A career high, 17 points. This kid impresses me the more I watch him on the floor. I just thought he was just going to be a spot-up shooter, but he really has got the confidence and the court vision to be able to run this program the way Dan Marley got success with what Dwayne Russell a year ago, and his drives to the basket have been fearless, not to mention that he can stroke the long ball. So congratulations on him establishing his career high right here in a Lopes uniform. Oscar Freyer, the sophomore, also playing really well. 13 points in the game, had two blocks, two steals, and he's also hitting from the outside as well. Yeah, you know, we talked about his uh, lack of ability to shoot the basketball a year ago. Couldn't make an outside shot to save his life, but he really came down in the third, uh, the, excuse me, the second half, the uh, early part of it, and knocked down three long bombs that got this crowd ignited. They weren't able to sustain that, but they need that kind of energy from him on the offensive end, and plus when he he gets on the board, he's an absolute beast with those follow jams. It is so great for Coach Marley to look down that bench and know that he's got a lot of players to go to, about 11 deep. One of those guys coming off the bench and really excelling is Jared Martin. Well, Jared Martin is the Lopes best defender. He gets flat out after a guy on the perimeter, getting his hands on deflections, taking charges, throws his body around with reckless abandon. He was the big reason why the Lopes really got out to that 20-point advantage. He didn't need to hit the basketball in his head to affect the game in a positive way for his mates. Little Rock comes in. They've got a ton of newcomers. I think they match Pitt for the most newcomers in NCAA Division I play. 
They've got a forward, though, as a junior, and we'll keep an eye on Cameron Rita. Yeah, he's a really good shooter from the outside. Can knock down the long ball, uh, can take the ball to the hole. He made 110 three-point shots a year ago. Better find him on the floor. Made three three-pointers, scored 11 points at Memphis in a loss against the Tigers. Should be a good matchup. It's the Trojans against the Lopes. Kate will send it back over to you. Thanks, Perry. And Scott, you mentioned earlier how it's human nature to let off the gas pedal. So I want to ask you, how, from a player's perspective, do you go out there, not play to the opposition, but just play your ball, whether the opponent be a strong opponent or a weaker opponent? I'm guessing Dan Marley just wants to focus on their own to see basketball. Well, it really takes some reps to get used to it. As a young player, it's hard to not really get up for the big games. That's when your senior leadership takes over. Look for guys like Braun and Benson really provide some vocal and emotional leadership to get these guys not to play through with the name on the marquee, but to play their best ability every time they step on the court. Yeah, and that makes sense. And we have seen that leadership from Braun really every time he's taken the court since he was a sophomore. But he'll go out there, I'm sure, preaching to protect the ball and get the win tonight. And that's exactly what Dan Marley wants to see. Coming up right after the break here on Your View, Barry goes one-on-one -on -one with Coach Marley to talk about their first basketball commitment for the 2018-19 season. It's a big one. You don't want to miss this announcement. Plus, we'll talk about the game plan against the Little Rock Trojans tonight. The Little Spring Game Show returns right after this. offers more than 200 innovative programs across nine colleges, which now include cutting-edge next-generation programs in engineering, computer science, and information technology. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Hello Phoenix, this is Jerry Colangelo from Grand Canyon University. You can join the GCU community by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors and get the support you need to excel. I look forward to seeing you on campus. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Here's your chance to catch head coach Dan Marley and the GCU men's basketball team up close and personal. Get the holiday power pack for games against Norfolk State on the 20th, San Diego on the 25th, Mississippi Valley State on the 18th of December, and Longwood on the 21st. The power pack, just $40 for the first one, bought and $20 for each additional. Plus, if you purchase a holiday power pack, you get a priority weight for season tickets next season. Call the box office, 602-639-8979, or go to lopestickets.com to get yours now. Lopes pregame show rolling along from GCU Arena. Barry Butel alongside the head coach of your Lopes, Dan Marley. Good evening, coach. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Looking for uh, three straight victories uh, against Little Looking Rock here tonight? Looking for 30 straight victories. 30 so straight. You, well, you can't get 30 without three. That's true, but look, we got to take one game at a time, that's right, why, coach? That's what I just said, Barry. <laughs> hey, some news uh, off the court from uh, you got a uh, got a recruit signing. Oh, we can uh, announce it. I don't know. Can we? Yeah, Is I think it? we can. Oh, yeah, very so. excited. Otherwise, uh, we won't be seeing this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tim Finky, uh, great young man, out of Chicago, out of Illinois, um, Champaign. We went and saw him. We've had our eye on him for a while, and uh, just really going to fit our mold. Uh, can really shoot the basketball. Great kid. Great family. Um, you know, with Josh leaving, we're going to have to have somebody kind of step in and, and be able to shoot the basketball, and he can definitely do that. He's got a great body. He's going to develop here uh, under Gabe, under Gabe, our strength coach, and get stronger and uh, should have a really bright future for him. And like I said, he's just one of those guys that can, can compete, um, come in here, and our guys are going to love him and our fans are going to love him, and he's going to represent uh, GCU in a great way. So uh, uh, a great get for us. He paid a visit here for the exhibition game, kind of saw what the atmosphere was all about. Was that the – how it helped close the deal? Well, that's what we always want to do. You know, I went down there and, and over there and talked to him and kind of told him about our, our atmosphere and what we have here. And as I told him when I was sitting there talking to him and his family, I said, I can rave about it all I want, but you won't believe it until you get here. And they came for our exhibition game and uh, and they got to meet uh, Mr. Colangelo and President Mueller and talk to all our academic people and then saw our terrific crowd. and. 
uh, safe to say that they were blown away by it. Yeah. And I said, you'll be playing in front of this, uh, you know, every year, and it even gets better. And uh, I think they realize that this is a very special place. Well, let's talk about the uh, game on the court. Big win against Robert Morris uh, to win your second of the season, 75-61. Blew him out in the opening half, up by 20. And we knew it had to. Uh, Robert Morris is a good program. They're going to come here and play really hard, and our guys uh, took the challenge early, came out and uh, really got it going in the first half, moved the ball, uh, scored 48 points, which was great. Defensively, very, very good. Smothered them, very active. Uh, got guys shot, moved the ball, uh, and kind of put them on their heels. Second half, not so much, but I thought our other guys came in uh, in that first half off the bench. Saw Jared there with a steal. Uh, Fifi came in. Everybody played well, so that first half was probably one of the best uh, halves of basketball. Uh, since I've been here. Important to put uh, two halves together, though, despite having big leads in the well, opening Well, I think half. so. I mean, it's easy, and I told our guys that, that if you get up by 20 or 25 points, it's kind of human nature to kind of let down, and we can't do that. We can't let teams back into the basketball game, and you got to play hard for 40 minutes no matter what, and uh, we're going to have to establish that again tonight. This, this team we're playing tonight is a good team. They're 0-2, but they're not an 0-2 team. Uh, I think they got caught with uh, with playing at home against the Division II team, and then they went to Memphis and was leading Memphis yeah, for most were. of the game and playing well at Memphis, and they ended up losing the last couple minutes. Uh, they're long. They're athletic. Uh, this will be another good test for us. Well, Josh Braun had a, a big game. He hit a, a career three-point mark for, for GCU. All in one game? Well, he, no, he passed it. Oh. No, not all in one. Oh. Well, he's been known to do crazy things. But, yeah, Josh has been great all the time, and uh, he stepped in and, and made some shots early. and. Uh, he's going to have to do that all year for us. He's, he's the, you know, the staple of what we try to do, uh, not only shooting-wise, but uh, posting up and his competitiveness. So he's been great, and uh, he shot the ball well for the four or five years he's been here, and he's going to have to continue it all year long for us. And Jared Martin coming off the bench, what a huge spark he Yeah, Jared's been great coming off the bench because I can play him at all kinds of different positions, and uh, he's just very talkative. He's got high energy. Defensively, he's very smart, knows what he's doing. Um, uh, defensively, he gets away, takes a lot of charges, gets in passing lanes, um, has done a great job for us. So he's kind of that fire coming off the bench for us. How about also defensively? You guys are playing real tenacious after two games, interior defense, lots of blocks. you got to well, be pleased with well, that. Well, it helps that we can play 10, 11, 12 guys because guys who uh, in the past we'd only play, you know, maybe seven or six, seven, eight guys, the guys we get tired. And now we got guys coming in and out and we fly around. We do have a lot of long athletes out there who can block shots, you know, with Oscar and Keontae, and then we got Roberts and, and Ollie and Kerwin, who are all 6'10". Uh, so we can put guys in there. Fifi is a guy. So, uh, you know, substituting those guys and having guys in there fresh. Uh, defensively, we've been really good. So uh, that's going to be kind of a of what we have to be this year. Offensively, we haven't been great. And we got to figure that out. And until we can figure it out, uh, we're going to have to win games with our defensive pressure. Some things you've been saying in the post game too, uh, turnovers. Yeah. So it's upwards of uh, 21 or that so. That has to go with our offense. We just yeah. haven't figured it out yet. We got some new guys with, you know, with Casey and Roberts and Ali and, and just trying to figure things out. Josh really hasn't practiced a whole lot. He's trying to round himself. He's had way too many turnovers. Uh, we've really had to concentrate on passing the ball a little bit better. So uh, we got to take care of the ball better last year. You know, Dwayne had the ball in his hands a lot yeah. last year, and he was very good with not turning the ball over. And this year, we're trying to move it a little bit more, and guys have to be uh, stronger with the basketball. Uh, you already spoke about Little Rock coming in. They are 0 2. They did take Memphis. They were ahead in that game uh, before falling to the Memphis Tigers and Tubby Smith. They come in, Mom Premier. They've got uh, a freshman guard as well. They move the ball around and, and they're pretty good from the perimeter. Yeah, we're going to see a lot of different things. They uh, they attack. They they're going to play a little bit of a zone, a 3-2 zone that we haven't seen uh, this year yet. They'll play man. They'll press. They'll quick trap. They'll run and jump. Uh, they'll mix up defenses. They'll deny. Uh, they're very good and long inside. They have a nice high-low game where they seal. They can shoot the ball from outside, but their game is to, to be athletic and take it to the rim. So we have to do a very good job of guarding the basketball, uh, uh, doing a good job of protecting the, the paint as far as their high-low game. And then, uh, as we talked about the turnovers, we can't turn it over under pressure. All right, Coach, good luck. All right, thank you. All right, our thanks to Head Coach Dan Marley. Of hey, the Tim. GCU. Wow, a I little hope he's shout watching. out there. Yeah. He is, he's watching. Hey, I hope so. Hey, Tim, how are you? Anyway, we'll be back with more of the Lowe's pregame show after we take this time out. Coming up, Superintendent of Saddle Mountain Unified School District will come along to chat with Kate. It's all about talking about participants in learning. Stay with us. More of the Lopes pregame show continues from GCU Arena after this time out. Hey, you. Are you ready? Grab your pack, grab your tent, grab your gear. Jump in. We're going on an adventure. Here in Arizona, there's so much to see, so much to do, so much to experience. 
When I started my degree program at Grand Canyon University, I knew I was embarking on a journey. I never expected it to be such an adventure. Offering over 200 academic programs with a Christian worldview and nestled in the heart of Phoenix, you're never more than a few short hours from something worth remembering. At GCU, adventure is never too far away. Study hard, play hard, never stop moving. What are you waiting for? Come earn your degree in fewer than four years while exploring everything Arizona has to offer. So, you ready? Find your purpose in Arizona. Find your purpose at GCU. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash azroadtrip. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. We want to remind you that the Lopes are back in action on Monday, November 20th, when the Norfolk State Spartans come to the House of the Havoc to take on GCU. Great tickets are still available by calling the GCU box office at 602-639-8979. If you can't make it to the game, be sure to tune in to the Lopes State and I'm joined now by a very special guest, Superintendent of Saddle Mountain Unified School District, Dr. Paul Ty. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight and taking in a game. And first, for those at home who don't know, take us through exactly where your district is located. Sure, well, it's my pleasure to be here this evening. My district, Saddle Mountain Unified School District, is on the west side of Phoenix, so the western part of the city of Buckeye, the unincorporated area of Tonopah, uh, Palo Verde, Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station is in the heart of our district. And then what makes your district unique? I know you might be a little biased, but this is your time to brag. Well, there's so many great things going on out there. We've got great kids, great staff, and uh, lots of wonderful programs. Last year, our robotics program was best in the state, went on to world competitions, as was our Odyssey of the Mind program. So a lot of innovation happening in our classrooms. That's great. And you also have established a wonderful relationship with GCU. How did that come about? Well, it's been developing over a number of years. GCU is a wonderful partner for K-12. They've done a lot of great things for our kids. Um, some of the, the successes we've had have been a result of some of the, su the support for STEM programs, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. We've had great partnership uh, for kids events with our high school in particular. Uh, for example, we had some uh, students visit from China and they spent some time with our kids last year and GCU brought them to a game here. We've had some great um, support for teacher development, for principal development, and even the superintendent's collaborative network which mentors uh, new superintendents. So a lot of great things, a lot of great support for K-12. The other great programs, the Participants in Learning, Leading, and Serving Alliance program. Take me through what this is all about. Well, it's part of the things that I just mentioned and an ongoing relationship with K-12. A lot of good opportunities for kids. We have a, a strong dual enrollment program where our high school students actually are earning uh, college credit here at GCU while they're in our classrooms, but it's college level instruction. That gives them a foot in the door for, for higher education. One of the many pieces of that partnership. What do you think it does for kids at the, the younger ages to already be plugged into a great university here in our state? Well, the research has shown that the greatest indicator or predictor of success in college is early access to college. And so our kids are getting early exposure and you know we believe that that's helping with their success rate beyond high school. And as your district expands and continues to populate and grow, I know you've said you've spent a lot of time here on the GCU campus, which has gone through that same development. What do you see when you step here, step on campus here, and what do you hope to emulate back at home in your district? Well, it's just an amazing transformation um, over the last 15 years, just seeing where GCU was, where it is now. You know, every time I come on campus, I look and say, wait a minute, that's different. There's a new building there. And so the growth here has been tremendous. You know, we're growing, but at a much smaller pace than GCU. But it's just amazing to see the transformation. The culture here with kids is just amazing. I don't think anyone can grow as fast as GCU, but to be just in that same ballpark, that's pretty great. Thank you so much, Dr. Paul Ty, for joining us tonight, and enjoy your first game here in GCU Arena. Will do. Thank you very much. All right. We are setting you up for tip-off here at GCU Arena as the Lopes prepare to take on the Little Rock Trojans. But first, when we come back, we are going to sit down with the our counterpart of these broadcasts, those folks who make the calls happen on the radio. We're talking 1580, the fanatic, Mike Bauer. He's on deck.
I'm Bethany, I'm a junior at GCU, studying Christian studies with a minor in psychology. Really what made me fall in love with GCU was the ministry aspect that they have here. I love all of the different community service opportunities that there are here. Students are making a huge impact on the valley just through painting the valley purple. It really means a lot to people in Phoenix to hear that somebody's from GCU. It almost gives you like credentials because they know that you're a good kid and that you're gonna go far. I have the privilege of bringing seventh and eighth grade students onto campus every week. I get to present to them a college readiness program. It honestly makes a huge difference in so many of their lives. I also am part of a mentorship program, so I am a mentor for a girl here in Phoenix. I get to walk her through life just like people are walking me through life. I definitely think GCU is preparing me for my future and teaching students and being a difference maker in the lives of other people. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to the Lopes pregame show. We want to remind you that you, even if you're at home sitting on your couch, we know you have your phone in your hand or your computer nearby, and you can be a part of the GCU men's basketball broadcast tonight and all season long, especially for your students at home right now for your Thanksgiving break. Jump online, follow us on, on Instagram or on Twitter, and use the hashtag Lopes Rising. And who knows, your tweet might just appear on the bottom of our screen. We look forward to hearing from you, especially you local fans who are at home enjoying the holiday. Tell us where you're at. And now we welcome into the Three Game Show, Mike Bauer. And Mike, I see a lot of you during the baseball season, obviously over at Diamondbacks, but I am thrilled that I will be seeing a lot of you here at GCU Arena. Take me through the new partnership with the Fanatics. Well, I mean, we're just thrilled to be part of the GCU family. I mean, just look how crazy the Havocs are right over my shoulder here. And, you know, we are the Fanatics. So we're the station for the fans. And it was a perfect marriage with us, this crazy fan base. And we're doing what we can. I know I'm wearing red, but we're doing what we can to paint the, paint the Valley purple, too. They can find you easily, so that's good. And speaking of which, tell fans exactly when they can find you and when your broadcast start for each game. Yeah, so if you go on 1580 AM, also 99.3 FM, and 95.9 in the East Valley. So if you live out in the East Valley, East Mesa, Patch Junction, all the way out there, we have a signal just for you out there, too. So you can get us there, 1580thefanatic.com, and, of course, all the different social media outlets, too. You know, I'm here Instagramming and tweeting during the games. So, uh, yeah, you can... You, you can't avoid us. We like that. You're, you're a good person to have on our side. And I know for the Lopes, they're excited to have this partnership, especially Dan Marley. You guys will be hearing from him every week. Is that correct? Yeah, every Tuesday morning on Monty and Crespin in the morning. Every Tuesday morning at 9 o'clock, Havoc. So 9 o'clock every Tuesday morning. And I mean, you guys, you guys know Coach Marley. He's not just a basketball coach. He's a huge sports fan. So sometimes he talks some baseball, some football, too. He has a lot of fun with the guys. That's great. And I know it's a great synergy for the different sports. And for you being out here watching GCU Athletics, what's been your initial impression? I know you've been very familiar with it. I'm, I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. Oh, yeah, GC, oh, my goodness. The, uh, I mean, the last few years, ever since they got to D1, you look at what they're doing. I love what's happening here. Not just everybody wearing purple, but it's the fact that they are they have a plan. And it's Dan Marley, it's Nicole Powell, it's Andy Stankiewicz. I mean, Marley just landed his first four-star recruit in his five years coaching here. So they have a plan, and they're constantly moving forward. It's kind of like Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. And they built it. And they're building it now with baseball and, I mean, the soccer stadium is amazing. So they have a plan, and look at the success. It's amazing. Right, and uh, speaking of baseball, we know you're there with the Diamondbacks during season, and you're here early for GCU games, and then you're late to get post-game sound. And you also have a day job? That's right, yeah. At the Fanatic, I'm on with Rock and Minuch with Bauer every afternoon from 3 to 6, and we're on location almost every day. So I'm usually coming to the game from... You know, one of the casino we're at, or one of the, you know, right Toyota, right Honda, something like that. So I'm usually coming here from our broadcast, too. I come straight here from uh, from Rock and Minute with Bauer, three to six, shameless plug, afternoons on the Fanatic. You're allowed to do a shameless plug because if you have the energy like you have, uh, that's only fair game that you can plug away. I don't know how he does it, but he does. You'll see Mike Bauer each and every game here. And you will also hear from his counterparts, Michael Potter, Tom Kuyper, they are on the call for the broadcast games. The 
of course want you to be able to tune into GCU games at home here on your view. But when you're on at the go, remember GCU can be with you. And when GCU is on the road, you can also tune in. It's the Fanatic, 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, 95.9 FM. He is Mike Bauer. I am Kate Longworth. That is the Purple Pregame Party, and it's just getting started here at GCU Arena. We're going to take a quick break, and then we'll get you back here to set you up for tip-off. I'm Dewey, a student here at GCU studying communications. My dad graduated from GCU in 2009, and he is definitely bleeding purple. He loves GCU to the max. And me choosing to follow in his footsteps was the best idea I could have chosen. I absolutely love sports, playing them and watching them, and I could talk about them all day. GCU has made it possible for me to pursue my passion of becoming a sports broadcaster. The program they had here and the direction it could take me was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Knowing that I could talk to a professor or a counselor about literally anything that has to do with my academia or even just my personal life was encouraging and exciting to know. The friends and the roommates that I've had in the last three years have made my quality of life a thousand times better. I am a GCU Lope and I will forever always be one. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Pre-game show, you are dialed into your view watching Division One college basketball as GCU hosts the Trojans of Little Rock. All right, well, they said the crowd might not be as crazy with students heading home for the holiday. Well, uh, I think they're here in full effect. There's no shutting down the house of Havoc. They are ready to go for the big game as the Lopes continue to prep for the competition outside their conference. They want to start this season by an, with an impressive, they hope, 3-0 start. But this is only setting the table for when they get into conference action. So with that on the line, let's take a trip around the WAC. Don't worry, you don't have to go anywhere. We're bringing it all to you on the couch. Check out New Mexico at New Mexico State, falling 75 to 56. Meanwhile, Seattle University victorious over Detroit Mercy, a big win there, 102-71 the final. Chicago State fell short at Northern Iowa, and Utah Valley comes up on top of UC Davis, 80-71 the final there. And Texas State takes away the W from UTRGV, 75-58, and some other action. Tomorrow night, you'll see Belmont at Seattle U. And on Monday, don't forget, it's Norfolk State at Grand Canyon University. You, we will have all the action starting at 6.30 p.m. with the Lopes pregame show right here on Your View. But for now, the table is set, and the Lopes are ready for some basketball. The goal tonight to put together two strong halves. Can they do it? Well, only time will tell. And also, Scott Williams and Barry Rudell will have all of the details. Tip off, it's next. Don't go anywhere. Lopes basketball, we're just getting you warmed up. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light. And now GCU is leading in the area of computer science and IT. With over 200 university degree programs across nine colleges on campus and online, join the most inventive concept in education today. Fast track options available with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, and systems architecture. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. At GCU, earning your degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. To find your purpose, it takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience in delivering real-world degree programs online. GCU's online class size averages less than 17 students with full-time faculty and student advisors. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Call us today at 855-428-7692. Finding the right college isn't always simple. The choices I make today affect where I'll be tomorrow. That's why I chose Grand Canyon University. 
year, I'm working toward a greater purpose and a place that feels like home. With scholarships to help me earn my degree, I can graduate in less than four years. By attending GCU, Arizona's premier private Christian university, I know I'm not just making the right choice. I'm making the smart choice. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu. Basketball alongside three-time NBA champion Scott Williams. I'm Barry Vitell. Kate Longworth will be along in just a moment. Well, the Lopes riding a two-game winning streak to begin the 2017-18 season. It came with a 75-61 win over Robert Morris. In that game, Casey Benson went off for a career-high 17. He was absolutely fantastic. I like the way the guy can actually move that ball on the floor. He's got great court vision. He can step back and shoot the three, but he's not afraid to take it amongst the trees. He showed ability to be able to use his offhand, some right-hand finishes. A really nice player. Good piece for Dan Marley's troops. A lot of minutes as well. 34 minutes, 17 points. Also chipped in with six rebounds. Now we move to another high flyer. How about Oscar Freyer? 13 points in the game. Well, I like the fact that he does it on the defensive end first, and then he's really gotten confidence in his outside shot. He knocked down three threes to start that second half, and of course he can really get the crowd off their feet the way he can finish around the basketball rim. But the best thing about him is he's really tenacious on defense, getting his hands on steals and blocking shots. Nine rebounds, almost had the double-double against Robert Morris. Little Rock comes 0-2. They come in 0-2 on the year. They lost a tough one at Memphis. Their uh, junior forward, Cameron Reedus, well, he hit three threes against Memphis. Yeah, he did a you know, nice job, really didn't, uh, being aggressive out there on the floor. He had dropped in 12 points. And this is a game in which the Trojans led for 32 of the 40 minutes. Should be a great, great matchup as Little Rock playing tough despite their 0-2 mark, taking on the 2-0 Lopes, trying to begin perfect 3-0. Let's get this thing started. Send it over to the public address announcer, Paul Deneuzer, with our prayer and our national anthem. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to the beautiful Grand Canyon University Arena and tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Trojans of Little Rock and your Grand Canyon University Antelopes. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you all please rise. Gentlemen, please remove your caps as we begin this evening's competition with a word of prayer. Tonight's prayer is led by Abby Henderson, an elementary education major and a member of the GCU cheerleaders. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for this awesome night that you've given us. Thank you for the sport of basketball and just the chance to play and watch, God. We ask that your hand of protection would be upon all of these athletes tonight, Lord. We love you so much, and we ask that everything we do would be done to glorify you. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Abby. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our nation's colors tonight is the NJROTC of Independence High School. Rex Foster is the commander of the NJROTC. Fans, please remain standing as we now honor America with the singing of the national anthem. The Star Spangled Banner will be performed this evening by the Independence High School Choir under the direction of Amy Godfrey.
Thank you, Independence High School Choir. Great job by the Independence High Choir. Chance of USA. And GC Arena, as you look at the head coach of the Little Rock Trojans, Wes Flanagan, in his second season. The Little Rock native spent six seasons with the program as an associate head coach. And Here is his starting five. KJ Gilmore, Jacek Lati, Cameron Rudis, Oliver Black, and Ben Marcus. Yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on number 10, guard Jacek Lati. He played really well in that game against Memphis. It was his first career start. He turned out 12 points and four assists. He's playing with just a ton of confidence. Six and 12 a season ago in the Sun Belt Conference, 15 and 17 overall. Flanagan's associate head coach is Kwanze Johnson. His assistant coaches are Mitch Coyle, Cole, and Solomon Bozeman. Wes Flanagan played four years at Auburn University. Coming off a tough loss at Memphis. One of the 22 run did the Tigers to win it. Now we introduce you to Grand Canyon University. Love fans. So long. Now we have to call him Mr. Three Pointer as he has the school record from behind the arc. One away from 200. He had 20 points and four threes against Robert Morris. We'll see how he can string two games together. The Wolves are 2 0. They beat Robert Morris 75 61 last Monday night. Dan Marley in his fifth season. The associate head coach is Todd Lee. The assistant coaches are Chris Premalone and T.J. Benson. Director of Basketball Operations is Luke Della Riva. The special assistant to the head coach is Brendan Sabian. And the graduate assistant is Johnny Hill. Josh Braun. Averaging 15 and a half points per game in the first two games this season. Setting a new GCU career mark for three-pointers against Robert Morris. Jack Carr bouncing around in the middle. This place is packed and the students are out on break. I can't, it, it looks like. It's amazing. Yeah, it truly is. So looking around, and I'm in awe. Let's go to your three keys. Yeah, speaking of rock and roll, you got a rock and roll. GCU oh, yeah. has played its best when they get their transition transition game going. Look for them to get it, the ball off the glass, and turn and burn. And every time I go to the gym, those meatheads are asking, hey, what are you pitch press? So this is what Coach Marley, he's got a good situation here. He's got so he's so deep. But who off of that bench is going to impact this game on the offensive end? Who's going to impact it on the defensive end? they got to get production from their bench tonight. And then pass the rock, preferably to somebody in a light-colored uniform because GCU has really struggled in the turnover department. Limit the turnovers and live with the extra shots. No drop-off in the enthusiasm here at GCU Arena. The crowd will remain on its feet until the Lopes hit their opening bucket. Mike Reed, Mike Cyphers, and Matt Basham are the officials. Oliver Black. Wins it for Little Rock. Jay Ziglotti leaves it there for Reedus. Pushes the ball over to KJ Gilmore, getting the start for Little Rock. Gilmore to his left. Lottie leaves it. Comes back out front. Soft little pass. Driving into the paint. Gilmore. 
Maridas, eyed by Vernon, trying to get up over the top, right at the shot clock. Up high for Vernon, but tipped there by Oliver Black. Well, great defensive stop, but Benson got to get a little too aggressive to try to find his big in transition. Don't need those passes. Make sure you get shots. Early turnover. They need to limit those. Gilmore to his right. Lottie. Aurora, Colorado native. Moves to his left around Blumberg's. Up off the glass, but putting it back is Ben Marcus. Ben Marcus was a man going down that right. Uh, lane line, nobody put a body on him, and he did deliver the finish. Lumbergs, short, picked up by Jay Zaglotti. Vernon hits the deck. Open look for Reedus. Heavy rebound, Benson on the run. Benson looking for support. Bounce pass, Freyer. Stripped to the ball, out of bounds, K.J. Gilmore. Well, Benson does a nice job surveying the defense. It was one on three, so he peels off to his right just a little bit. Gives Oscar Freyer an opportunity to run that left wing. Just wasn't able to finish. Nice play defensively. Inbound by Freyer. Inside Braun, quick off the glass and in. Oh. Take a seat. That's so typical of the way the Lopes execute their baseline out of bounds plays. Always manage to get high percentage looks. Body back out front. Marcus, he's got the bucket. He's got the second one as well. Easy one off the glass. Yeah, too easy. Roberts, he's got to get down into a stance and slide his feet. Braun guarded by Marcus, loses the handle. Backcourt violation. Back violation for GCU. Let's go back to this baseline out of bounds play one more time. Do a nice job, Keontae Vernon. He really seals in the middle. Defense has to honor that, which opened up the lane for Braun to slip to the hole. Two early turnovers. Marley's not going to like to see that. Driving is Gilmore. Swatted by Vernon, put back, not there for the Trojans. Marcus Paul. Keontae Vernon in his first three games, even though we're early in this one, has made it a point of emphasis to come out and help from the weak side and try to block or alter shots from his that his teammates uh, are defending. And he did a nice job on that play. Inbound. Benson eyed by Lottie. Bounce pass, Braun, near side. Kick back out, Benson moves to his left. No room, but a little bit for Blumberg's. Oh, it rings out. Pulled down by Marcus. He's gotten two good looks. Yep. The freshman just hasn't been able to knock him down. Marcus drives. It's been the Ben Marcus show for Little Rock. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, Marley's not going to mind the missed shots, but he will mind getting blown by to the basket and giving layups. Lombards doesn't start shutting that down. We're going to get a sub off the bench. Lombards out of bounds. In the ball game for the Trojans, number 23, Watley. Here's one more time. He gets ahead of steam, just straight blow by, and does a nice job using that left hand to protect the ball with the right shoulder. Flanagan puts Wadley Mom Premier in the game from Marcus. I think you had some tough sledding underneath. Wait till he comes in the game. He blocked four shots in the first half on their game Monday night against the Memphis Tigers. In the first half, he blocked four. He is long. 6'11, 228, senior from Miami. Gilmore bounces into Mont Premier. Mont Premier trying to turn. Now he kicks back out. Long range shot. In and out. Up over the top is Mont Premier. And that was a much better job. Blumberg's putting a body on Montpremier, moving him away from the basket. He wants to use his length about the rim. They're not going to run any plays for him offensively. So he knows if he's going to get a chance to score, he's got to go chase it down after the shot goes up. Good picture of Wes Flanagan there, second season, 15, 19 a year ago. Really gets his troops to play hard. Ray Jones, Anthony Black in. 
for the Trojans. That's it, careful to Vernon on the deck. Jump ball, possession arrow for the Lopes. So sloppy. That's yep. not going to go down as a turnover, but that pass was highly contested. Either Vernon didn't do a good job of holding off the defender, or he threw it to the wrong side of Vernon's body, but Lopes got to pick it up here. Inbound, Benson. Benson looking inside. Finally, Blumberg leaves it for Benson. Oh, he went up. And Anthony Black got a hand on it. Look out, Reedus drives to the hole. Not there. Vernon with the rebound. Quickly up. Blumberg turning off the glass to drop. Nice job by Josh Braun not giving up the play. Contested that shot at the rim and they turned it around the opposite direction. That's like a four point swing. Jones kicks out. Black now back inside. Mom Premier. Jones, a long three. Short, but the rebound picked up by Black. See if White, not there as well. Kicked out, Vernon collides heavily with Oliver Black. Well, the referees have conflicting calls here. They're going to get together and figure it out. Lopes ball. Let us one one more time. It's Black, who does a good job. Excuse me, yeah, does a good job on that glass. And then both players going hard for the basketball. Of course, anybody that runs into Vernon seems like they end up on the deck. Yeah. High likelihood of that. 6-4 is the lead for Little Rock. Let's send it over to Kate Lockworth. Well, guys, the Lopes have a lot to be thankful for this week as they actually received an early Christmas present as they got a national letter of intent from their first four-star recruit, Tim Finke. And a big congratulations goes to assistant coach TJ Benson, who paid several visits to the 6'6 guard out of Champaign, Illinois. But I'm guessing what sealed the deal was Tim and his parents visited GCU Arena at the beginning of this month to see the Lopes and the Havocs in action. And Finky, quite the star, averaging his junior year just over 17 points a game nearly eight boards and 3.8 assists. Guys, we've heard Dan Marley talk about just what a great all-round player Josh Braun was. That was his first recruit, and I know he's looking for someone to fill those very big shoes, and Tim Finke might just be the guy. Big, big pickup, that four-star recruit from Champaign, Illinois. Yeah, they're looking forward to it. We got to stroke the rock. Ball from deep, you know, they lost Kenzo Nudo, so they need somebody to come in and fill that position. Smart, heady player, son of a coach. So you know you guys got high basketball IQ. Little Rock shooting three of 11 from the field. GCU two of five early on. Which Marley knew Little Rock would come in here and play tough. You mentioned off the top, they led Memphis for 32 minutes by as much as 14 before succumbing as the Tigers went on a 22-11 run to win it. They got Jared Martin in a lot faster this game. He's yep. changed the games with his defense and does a better job taking care of the basketball. Martin in for Blumberg's. Braun walks three. He gets it! Uh, lead change. Beautiful back screen, kind of a flare screen. Uh, more accurately described by Martin, he even got Braun open for a look. 200 threes now in his career. Black to his right. Andre Jones back to Black, over to Reedus. Reedus kicks it down into the corner for Mom Premier. Trying to drive baseline, runs over. Burn it. How about big KB sliding those biscuits, cutting off the baseline, using that baseline like a second defender? Good job. I don't know. It was, it was either Martin or Vernon. You could have yep. gave either one of those guys credit for the charge. Second on Mom Premier. He's going to check back out. Marcus is back in, and Marcus has all their points. That's it. Got some support there for Jared Martin. I buy Black. Martin. Let's go back to Benson. Benson. Martin. Bounce pass. Vernon. Inside. Trying to turn on Marcus. Up over the top. Heavy. Pulled down by Chris Bankston. Uh, the Trojans doing a nice job clearing their defensive glass right now. Lopes unable to get any second chance opportunities. 
Black running all over the court. Marcus checks over to Jones, now in the corner. Reedus. Black. Back out to Jones. Jones in the paint up high, left hand, and he's stoned by Jared Martin. Oh, Martin says, you shall not pass. I'm on this wall. Martin gathers it in, goes up high, but it's stopped there as well. Oh, turn the page on yeah. Martin. So you blocked me at one end, we're going to get you at this end. Reedus, Jones, pulls down, back out to Black, to his right. Reedus leaves it there for Marcus. Marcus, inching in, into the paint, kicks out. Black pulled down, had an open look there for a while. Marcus tries to drive in. Martin got a hand on it. It's going to be called for the foul. Yeah, a little too handsy. Got him across the oh, wrist. Oh, nice oh, job oh, coming oh, over from the weak side. Just slide your feet. Don't reach. Did a good job cutting the guy off. Just don't reach down and hack him. And boy, I'll tell you what, these Trojans are really impressive the way they move that basketball. Marcus quickly inside. Jones turning. Oh, Bernie's going to be called. We burned his first one on Martin, so if Lopes got in any foul trouble, per se, nobody would do, but just getting out of position, trying to get a, a hand check on the guy with the basketball when he's putting that ball on the floor, they're going to whistle you every time for that one. Check Carr comes in. Alessandro Labor checks in. Are much earlier than this in this basketball game as well. Barry Harley in for Little Rock. Ooh, just beyond the reach of Shaq Carr. Anthony Black, junior guard from Little Rock. Lined by Shaq. Moves to his left. Kicks out. Gets it back. Black looks long for a long three. Rings out. Rebound by Marcus. Not there. Freyer climbs up and grabs it. Rare with a nice move around Black, and Jones comes out. Carr looking for some help. Back out. Labor leaves it for Carr. Boy, wow. Travel. Got it yeah. caught up on his right hip. Yeah, he couldn't get that ball down on the floor. You called it. Five turnovers here. Seven, a little, a little seven minutes of action. One of the keys, and didn't take a rocket scientist if you had watched the ball game against Robert Morris, is you got to take care of the basketball. You had 21 turnovers against Robert Morris, and a lot of them like that, unforced. It wasn't because of the pressure. Jones driving, tried to lay it in there. Somehow ends up in Little Rock's hands. Got a fresh 30. Hardly appeared to travel, but wasn't called. Labor with the rebound up to Shaq Carr. Leaves it for Braun. Pulls down the three. Drives. Floats it up high off the glass. Gets the hoop in the arm. Uh, I tell you what, Josh Braun, I thought he was going to challenge the big at the basket with an overhand finish, but look how crafty he is. He just a little floater right up over top of the defender, and then he gets uh, body contact underneath, gets knocked to the ground. What concentration on the finish? 7 0 run, Lopes. Oh, Lopes here in that 7 0 run in the last three minutes, 33 seconds. Braun to the line. It's hit three of five early this season from the charity strike. Little Rock 0 for their last nine from the field. Not like they're. They're getting looks. They're, they're getting, getting some really good looks and some second chance opportunities. The Lopes have been turning the ball over. They're really? quite lucky to be in the position they are with a four point lead. That's right. Andre Jones bounce pass. Oliver Black. Jones pulls back, looking to go over the top of Martin, and he does. Well, I tell you what, Martin plays great D. He just got bit with Ben Rowe that time. Carr, careful. Back out, Braun. He wants three. Bam! Nice job by Shaq Carr. Dribble penetration, being in attack mode, but also keeping his eyes up and seeing the floor. And no better person to pass it to than Josh Braun. 11 points for Josh Braun. Little Rock can't drive. Picked up by Labor. The drive by Black unsuccessful. Kicks back out. Martin. Oh, Jackson in the game. 
Foul call. And they were not going to give Josh Braun a third look from behind the arc. Ran him off that line, but got a little too handsy. Timeout on the floor. 13 to 8. The Lopes take the lead with 11.44 to go. Opening half. Keep it right here on your view. GCU's College of Science, Engineering, and Technology offers a premier STEM education with relevant curricula designed to lead you to a career in the competitive fields of science, technology, engineering, and math. GCU is investing in the future of our STEM programs with multiple state-of-the-art facilities providing students with access to cutting-edge technology. Our STEM education is motivated by a Christian worldview which cultivates ethical decision-making. The College of Science, Engineering, and Technology fosters traits in adaptability, collaboration, creativity, as well as ethical and social awareness, which makes our graduates from our STEM programs more competitive. Through robust collaboration and partnership with industries that require a STEM-prepared workforce, our faculty concentrates exclusively on student success within a deeply nurturing Christian setting. Find out more at gcu.edu slash CSET. Here's your chance to catch head coach Dan Marley and the GCU men's basketball team up close and personal. Get the holiday power back for games against Norfolk State on the 20th, San Diego on the 25th, Mississippi Valley State on December 18th, and Longwood on December 21st. The power pack, just $40 for the first one bought and $20 for each additional. Plus, if you purchase a holiday power pack, you get priority weight for season tickets next year. Call the box office at 602-639-8979 or log on to LopesTickets.com to get yours now. I'm bringing from this packed house at GCU Arena. Some people have already taken advantage of the power pack. Long range shot. Labor not there. Pulled down by Kari Harley. Should have gave it to Braun. He's got 11 of GCU's first 13 points. Taylor now 0 for 4 from the arc. Probably not a good option for him. Inside, off the glass, too heavy by Oliver Black. Was it too strong or did Braun block that across the basket? I wasn't quite sure. sure. He was up there to contest it, that's for sure. Laver, inching in, moves baseline, now to his right, back to his left, floater, too heavy. Jackson up over the top. I almost don't mind that one by Matt Jackson. There's only two team fouls. He just got in the game. It's his first personal foul. And he's trying to get on the offensive glass and try to work himself into this game. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. On the run with some afterburners is Jacek Lottie. A nice job. They did a clear out. They had both bigs lifted high, so there was no rim protector. And Lottie just went dotty right on to the basket. Dottie? Lott Lottie Dottie. Lottie oh, Dottie. Oh, rap song. Oh, I remember it. <laughs> Jack Carr. Oh, look at Jack Carr. Oh, and Shaq put him in his house that time. He went right to the rack. Double on uh, number zero. So if you're going to take me to the hole, I'm going to return the favor. Marcus to Jones. Backing in right hand. Ooh, foul ball. Looks like Matt Jackson might have his second person. I, I think it was Martin. I think Jared Martin, who normally does a really good job moving his feet that time. It was Jones that does a nice job with a spin move, gets his shoulder right into the chest of Martin. He didn't like the call, but I think it was the right call. Second on Jared. And 6'4. They listed the 198 there, but he, he's got some big old broad shoulders on him. He looks like he might be pushing 210. Yeah. When you get the weight right, I could see on the height, but guys like to fidge a little bit. Yeah, yeah. a little under, I, under two bills. I, but. I, I, used, I got to Carolina, I was like 215. I was like, oh, I had 10 pounds of that. I don't want guys thinking they can look yeah. at the, at the uh, media guy and go at me all night long. <laughs> I wish I was 215 now. 
Really? Or not 215? Check car. Oh, careful. Slightly above that level. Just a little 250, 217. A little north of two, yeah, a little north of 220. Braun. And it's like a sea of red in front of him. In the corner, BPA doing the game. Braun's got to look for three at the buzzer. Oh! I'm sure if Ron was going to get that off his fingertips in time, but Matt Jackson did a nice job recognizing a hot hand. 14 points, perfect five for five from the field. Three of three from the arc is Josh Braun. Lopes are not used to the speed of this Trojans basketball team, but look at this one more time. Oh, it was Fifi at Duke. I gave Matt Jackson the credit. It was a dude that made that nice little pass over to Josh Braun. But the speed of the Trojans right now has gotten GCU confused. They're not giving enough distance. These guys are getting blown by to the bucket. Two off. Parr gets his first personal foul. Here we go against Robert Morris and some of the other teams they face. They haven't faced a team with this much speed. Jones loses the handle. Braun picks it up. Bounce pass to his right. Check car. Driving to the ditch. Dishes it out. BB and do. Short. Little flat on the shot. Nice job, Kerwin Smith. Working that weak side glass. Had his guy pinned up underneath the rim. You're not getting any rebounds if you've gotten pinned up underneath the basket. All he's got to do then is go straight up for the ball, which he did. The defender had no choice but to follow him. TCU's going to be shooting free throws the rest of this half. That is already the sixth team foul on Little Rock. Reedus checks back in for Andre Jones. Inbound, Kerwin Smith, back to Braun. Braun over to Shaq Carr. Carr looking inside, looking for some help from Jackson. Frees him up. Right hand off the glass. Thank you, Matt Jackson. And the open lane for Shaq Carr. I don't think, I don't think Shaq Carr liked being on that bench. <laughs> they had a little <laughs> Mitchie Milstead over there, who was the first guard off the bench. Shaq Carr must have had a good week of practice because he has taken advantage of his opportunities here in the early going. Carr with four points and two assists in just five minutes. Gilmore pulling back over Fifi short. Jackson lets it go. Now the Lopes are starting to pick it up a little bit. Looking a little sharp offensively. They've got to cut down some of those driving lanes, but at least now they're contesting a lot of the shots in which the Trojans are taking around the bucket. Jackson into Fifi Adu. Adu to Braun. Braun's going to give it back to Jackson. Fifi quickly to Shaq Carr. Over to Braun, open for three. that press out. The Lopes got the cookie cutter right back out. So we'll show you what we do to a press. Ball never met the floor. Moved it with the pass. They got the hot man with a shot. What Braun got now? My goodness, 17. 17 points already. Oh, but look at the work by Jason Lottie. Lottie Dottie is having his way in the paint. Kerwin underneath. Oh! Uh oh, is Kerwin okay? Yeah, he's all right. Got down there amongst our camera crew. But he's all right. He's tough. That look over the top has been there against some other game, other uh, teams that the Lopes have faced, but the Trojans of Little Rock do a nice job in transition, getting back and really forcing that pass way down to the basket. See, he's yeah. already beneath the hoop. He just looked ankle. like his ankle turned. Yeah, he said he's all right, though. Made Keontae sit right back down. Kerwin wants minutes, too. He's working it no. against Gilmore. Nice job sliding his feet. Gilmore trap. Yep. Time out on the floor. 7.50 to go. Opening half, 23-14. The Lopes on top. How about Josh Braun? G6 six of six from the field. He is looking phenomenal. Yeah, the mayor's doing his darn thing out there tonight. I mean, just right where he left off against Robert Morris when he dropped 20 against them. He, he's trying to go for 20 in the first half tonight. Teammates doing a nice job finding him. He needs doing a nice job moving without the basketball. So you see a lot of depth on this bench right now. A lot of rotation. Josh Braun doing all he can do. Four of four from the arc. Well, when you get good looks like that inside, they want to play off you just enough. 
give you enough space to be able to fire from the outside, but he is mixing up the drive and the outside shot with perfection tonight. He really got the Trojans discombobulated on the defensive end. They got no answer. Doesn't matter if they put a smaller player on him, he's taking him to the hole. If they put a bigger player on the second too far off, too slow to recover, he's knocking down the outside shot. 17 points, 6 of 6 from the field. Little Rock, 14 points. They're 6 of 22. At the all-time GCU mark for three-pointers against Robert Morris. And he's carried that momentum over with a hot hand here in this opening half against the very tenacious Little Rock squad. Yeah, head coach Wes Flanagan, I'm sure during that timeout break, he has instructed his team to run Josh Braun off that three-point line whenever he is anywhere one pass removed from the basketball. So if he's one pass away from catching that ball, they're going to have a guy up on the passing lane or up up in his tights so he can't get another three off this this uh, remainder of this half. Shot Carr making his way out. Oh, away from the play, Fifi Adu. Yeah, he really got to look at this half and say, this has been a really nice half for the Lowe's, but seven turnovers. Still got seven minutes, 42 to play in this first half. Coach Marley's got to be getting frustrated with his team's inability to be able to take advantage of taking care of the basketball, getting extra shots. Oh, now they turn it over the other way. They got four turnovers here. Oh, this is a sloppy half on both ends here. Wes Flanagan, their head coach, former Gatorade High School Player of the Year in Arkansas at Little Rock Parkview High School. Yeah, standing right, just looked up. He got state people standing in the upper deck. This place is packed. Remarkable. Both teams now with the bonus. Bounce pass from Braun to Smith. To Fifi Adu. Back to Smith. Trying to drive on Marcus, leaves to Braun. Braun into the paint. Oh, he looks the lucky around Oliver Black and in. Yeah, he did a little oh, Euro step on the big man. Took him right to the rack and knocked out another one. Short for Ritas on three. Up over the hand of out of bounds. Gilmore unable to get it. In the ball game, the Just one more time by Braun. You have to chase him over the top. Because you don't want him to shoot another three. And now once he gets you on your on his back, you just a jersey cheater. He just chasing him from behind and attacks the big guy with that funky little Euro step right to the hole for the butter roll. Preseason whack player of the year, Josh Braun, 19 points, seven of seven from the field in just 13 minutes. Fifi. Oh, gets Kerwin. Well, I like putting Kerwin in situations where he's doing things on the ball by setting screens, and then he can roll to the basket. But he didn't get a clean screen the first time, and then wanted to come back and, and try to pick him off a second time. And see, that's just that movement right up into the defender. Going to get whistled every time. Lottie goes to his right, soft. Good D there by Kerwin Smith. He played it without foul, and all he had yep. to do was alter the shot, and that's what he did. Nice job, and he picks up the rebound. Almost got set with a little illegal screen, though. I got to work on that one. Kerwin Smith turning. That's a lefty hook here. Goes right hook. Heavy. Fifi got a hand on it. Matt pushed it back to Braun. Jack Carr bounced pass. Picked off by KJ Gilmore. Gilmore in the corner. Jones pulls down the three inside the arc. In and out. Hold down by Carr. How about Shaq Carr balking out the bigger man black and getting that ball? Shaq Carr brought his A game to the park today. Little Rock's drought at 222 and County. Carr. Hide by Gilmore. Know what was that? We're trying to develop there, but they did not get into the set. I don't think the way Coach Marley wanted to. I think he's got Casey Benson off that bench. 
after Shaq Carr shoots his one and one situation, we might see Benson for the rest of the half. But excellent job by Carr during his minutes this first half. Vernon's coming in for Kerwin Smith. Casey Benson's at the scorer's table as well. Six points. Did a really good job during this 12 2 run now for the Lopes. Jack takes the seat, Casey Benson in. Benson trying to eye Lottie. Good work there by Black. Green hit him up. Inside. Oliver Black leaves it there for Anthony Black. Black loses the handle to Matt Jackson. Benson up for FIFA. Black with a rebound. He went soft. He had an opportunity to finish that overhand and dunk the ball. He tried to roll it up other on the glass underhand, and it had too much speed, so it bounced off the backboard and came off. Make a statement. Inside. Left hand, heavy. Jackson got a hand on it. Ends up in Casey Benson's hands. Jason Glani on Benson over to Fifi Adu. Anthony blocks on him. Fifi's got some room in the ball. Oh, hand reaching in there. Now, this is the play before. Casey Benson gives him a good pass. That should be two steps in a jam. Watch these kids in, in, light, in the layup line, and they finish with authority, but they come in the game, they shrunk down. Next time he goes to the hole, he gets that body contact, not shying away from it, earn himself two uh, shots from the free throw line. I'm not sure if he learned from his mistake, but it was certainly effective the second time around when he went to the basket. What nice job in. for Matt Jackson. I'm sorry. Nice job. I wanted to point that out. Matt Jackson, good minutes when he was on the floor. Mm -hmm. Didn't necessarily be a, uh, a large point total uh, for him, but he was really communicating on the defensive end. Quite often was switching out to smaller players out in the perimeter. 15-point lead. Oscar Frere can do these next four minutes. Yeah, they shine here early on. Trojans looking for their first bucket in 347 and counting. Stopping and popping. That's off the mark. Vernon pulls down the rebound. They're getting the looks. Wow, he went up there like a, a grizzly bear and snaps that ball with two hands. Benson for three. Good. Casey Benson. Welcome to the party, pal. I was wondering what Casey Benson was going to get in the scores column. He's been doing a nice job dishing the rock, but it's about time he knocked down the long ball. Timeout on the floor at 32 14. GCU on top of Little Rock on a Saturday night in Phoenix, Arizona. Leave it right here. GCU is the university that never sleeps, moving at the speed of light, so we can give our students the competitive edge they need to succeed. And now, GCU is leading in the areas of computer science and IT. We prepare students to meet the demands of the fastest growing industry through our innovative IT programs in our College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. Using the latest real-world tools and an adaptive curriculum, GCU gives students the education they need today to excel in their careers tomorrow. Join the most inventive concept in education right now and position yourself for a future in the expanding world of IT. GCU offers fast-track options with courses in cybersecurity, cloud computing, systems architecture, and business analytics. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu slash IT. Welcome back. You're dialed into your 
Northview watching Lopes basketball where GCU has a 32-14 lead over Little Rock. And taking a look at the college landscape, well, if you go out there like you did last Tuesday night and defeat number two Michigan State, 88 to 81, well, then you're probably going to land yourself in that number one spot too, with a 4 and 0 record. Michigan State at number two, Arizona at three with 3 and 0 record, followed by Kansas at 3 and 0, and Villanova cracking into the top five as well at 3 and 0 record. Meanwhile, rounding out the top 10, you've got Florida, North Carolina at number nine, USC Trojans at number 10, and UCLA at that 23 spot, followed by West Virginia, and Baylor is at 25. And now let's send it back for more action on the Trojans of Little Rock and GCU Lopes. No bucket, no bucket. I'm not sure what exactly the message was during that timeout for the Trojans, but it was well received because Latte went hard to the hole with the ball. Brings out, boy, Little Rock, 6 of 27 from the field, is 22%. GCU has 10 assists, the Trojans with two. Yeah, meanwhile, GCU is shooting a phenomenal 52% from the field. They're even shooting better from three. They're shooting 57, 56% from the land of, uh, the land of three. Works on a 9-0 run in the last three and a half minutes. Putting Little Rock over the double team foul limit, Oscar Freer in shoot two. Marcus picks up his third personal foul. Marcus with six points. In the ball game for Little Rock, number 14, Jameer Hudson. Frere shoots his basketball here. Tell me if his shot's got enough air under. That first one looked a little on the flat side. Interesting. What do you, you think? Yeah. I, I think a little bit more air in, in that particular shot right there might have found the bottom of the bucket, but it comes in so flat it just it bangs around the rim a little too hard. Straight out off the rim. Black looks inside, not there. Jones, he looks inside, oh, reaching over his brawn. JB knew it as soon as he did it. Yeah. <laughs> he did. I'm going to try and get a steal on this play because I have no personal fouls. I'm going to go ahead and try to take a swipe at this one here. Unfortunately, it's going to send Black to the free throw line, and he's going to try and get him on the score sheet. He's 0 for 3 from the field. He does got two boards, but he's got two personal fouls, so it'll be interesting to see if he stays in the game the remainder of the half, if they're going to get somebody up off that bench so he doesn't pick up his third foul. Connects on the front end now. Seven of 12 from the free throw line early this season for Little Rock is Oliver Black. Redshirt junior from Jackson, Mississippi. Dressing. Fifi. Frere. Now they peel back. Casey Benson. Three minutes to go, opening half. Fifi wants three, off the mark to the right. Up for Lottie. Lottie was doing that a lot early in the very beginning of this game, and I picked up on it, didn't comment on it, but I was wondering if the officials might try to whistle him at some point for that hand underneath the ball that he pulls it across the top of the ball and they finally got him back to Braun looks for three and my goodness Bum -bam. Josh Braun what a first half you have had he's hot as fish streaks I mentioned he once went I once went 12 for 12 for a game LeBron must have heard me because he's he's a great trying to close it on my record right here in the first half alone that's it looks for three Finds air. Hazard in the game from Sarajevo. Bosnia. 
A little token press this time out of, out of little, little Rock. Benson, back out Frayer. Frayer looks inside, pulls back. LeBron says, I got a mouse in the house. Give me the ball. Number 30's on me. I'm twice as tall as he is. So you're getting Hatchet. Somehow Black has got a mismatch guard Josh Brock down the head block. And he was fighting for everything he had. Brock, Brock kind of looked at his buddies like, are you kidding me? Just throw, just throw it up over my forehead. He can't reach it. Burning at the line. Oh, I 12. Kind. Keontae Vernon that time. Now he got the ball up in the air. Yeah, it, exactly. And, and it wasn't a great shot, but anytime you give that ball more of an opportunity to stay around the rim, better chance it's got to go in. Hey. Mom Premier go down the all over Freyer. Hope for a nice job on the glass, out rebounding. The Trojans 22 to 14. Jones throws her out Fifi in the paint, left hand floater, and it drops. Ooh -wee. And that and was a nice drive by Jones, Jones there. Took him on with the right shoulder and put that thing in his left paw, extended it out away from his basket, body rather, and then flipped it up into the basket. Six minutes, 20 seconds was the drop for Little Rock. Braun muscles his way. Wanted it, didn't get it. Vernon on Mom Premier. Gosh, he his, is human, isn't he? Yeah, there goes his uh, per, streak of perfection there. You get a little chuckle out of it. Well, Premier, Oliver Black to his right. Lottie, Lottie, eyed by Freya. Gets back out, Mont Premier wants three. Off the mark. Oh, but look at the rebound. Put back by Anthony Black. I always hated this as a big, because the coach always gets on you, but I always thought those air balls, those are those shots that don't hit the rim favor the offensive team to be able to get it back. Officially, they're saying Josh lost the ball, wasn't a shot. Say what? Oh, yep. oh, 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 what? going on over oh, there. <laughs> smells good. Yeah, well, yeah. I think the whole cooking. Thanksgiving's coming up oh, right around yeah. the corner. You know the big man likes to eat. I'm looking yeah. forward to sitting All down over a couple plates and yeah. watching some football. We get the day off, right? Yeah, we're gonna be able to watch some football and feed our stuff our face. Go back to this one here by Josh Brown. He powers it into the hole and he's going up for it. And looks like a pretty like if he was going to pass that ball, I don't know who the heck he was gonna pass it to. Certainly looked like he got stripped <laughs> on the shot off on the shot attempt. Oh, pushed out. Oh, oh look at Keontae Vernon. He deserved that. I'm not even sure what happened there, but I know Dan Marley <laughs> says don't worry about it. Credit us for two. We got a 40-20 advantage here going to the break. Amazing. Little Rock, man, they came to play. They just they had the looks, they just weren't able to drain the shots. Yeah, hard luck kids here yeah. this first half. We'll see what happens in a second. Lottie leaves it underneath. Not sure if it was Benson or Vernon on that weak side, slapping down across the rest. Vernon. Big hit, Vernon. So that's going to be his second personal foul. He's probably going to come out of yeah. this one here. And we're going to get Kerwin Smith in so he doesn't pick up his third before the break. Although, I guess he would be going to the offense. Less chance for him to pick up an offensive foul. Oliver Black. Back to the free throw line. They get to shoot too. A, they're in the double bonus here. Black now, perfect three for three. On the free throw line. Fifi and Vernon out. Vaughn <laughs> back in. Yeah, with Vaughn back in. <laughs> They don't want to see that coaching staff over there and, and Little Rock do not, does not want to see Braun come back in here with 11.9 in that clock. He's, he would have to think that this play is designed for Josh Braun to get this last shot of the half. Short, Smith to Benson. Benson driving, pulls back, kicks it back in, soft underhanded in, hooping a hard. 
Very impressive play by a left-hander going to his right. He does sort of a little scoop here. It's kind of a stop, start, and go. And before the big can come over, he flips it up from below his shoulders up to the basket. Just kind of quicks the, quicks the big. Never had the opportunity to come over and contest the shot. Oh, no way. Oh, you're going to say a lane violation. They call it a foul on Kerwin Smith. That's about the last thing Coach Marley would have wanted in that situation. They're going to shoot two free throws on the other end. He, and he put Kerwin Smith in there so Vernon wouldn't get the foul. But silly play by Kerwin Smith. But other, he's been around this game long enough to know you do not commit that foul and send him to the basket when they're 90 feet away with four seconds to go in the, in the half. That gives him a little bit of life. Oliver Blacks. Going well from the free throw line, three of four. Officials are going over to. I don't know if Coach Marley said, hey, check the clock. Maybe we can get a couple extra ticks the other way in case we are able to secure this rebound. It actually, instead of adding a couple tenths, they took a couple tenths off. No, oh, wait, no, wait. Now they got it back to 4.2. It was 4.3. Okay. And they moved it down to 4. That's good. Zero, That's good. That's and now they put it back up to 4.2. You never know. How many times do you see a shot on a guy's fingertips as it's, the red light comes on? So maybe that extra two tenths might be enough for JB to crack a three. It'd have to be a pretty long one, I would think, though. Oh, it's going to be hard for him to do it from the bench. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Matt Jackson or Casey Vince. If anybody can do it, he can do it. <laughs> Why is he out of the game? Come on, coach. Make him look bad over here. Oh, because they're going to call timeout. There you That's go. Fine. Gonna, he got in a little breather during the free throws. Timeout on the floor, 4.2. They're going to draw it up. We'll see how well they execute in just a moment. Head coach Nicole Powell and the Lady Notes are on the road at UNLV tomorrow. They Lost a close one on the road against Cal Poly on Thursday. Bree Mobley at 27 points. They'll be back in the arena on November 22nd when they face off against Benedictine from Mesa, Arizona. Game time, 6 p.m. If you can't make it out to GCU Arena to cheer on the Lopes, be sure to watch the game on GCU.tv. Got another television broadcast coming up in December. It's Long Beach State. Had that first game against Duke. GCU women's basketball played the Blue Devils very tough. I was, that was exactly the phrase I was going to use. They played them extremely tough. It was no quit. Coach Powell's team. They fought them tooth and nail all the way down the stretch. And I, I was I was proud of the effort. I'm sure Coach Powell was well. All right. Let's see what we got here. 4.2 quickly. Shakar bringing it up. One second quickly. Jackson a long three. Oh! Well, they used Braun as the decoy. They let the 6'10 Matt Jackson shoot the 28 footer. And I think that was a nice play. He They're looking at it. it. They're looking at it. The officials are at the scores table. Let's well, take a look. It's that extra. Right. Come on. That One, extra, maybe that extra two tenths of a second. Oh, that's close. That's close. They needed, they needed maybe needed four tenths that's of a second. Close. I don't they know. They needed that. They needed that extra tenth of a second, maybe. I don't oh, know. no. There's the light on over oh, here. I don't know. She did it's not, not get it off. Wave off the basket. Nice half by the Lopes. 22 uh, point event. We got to wait. Uh, wait for it. Doesn't look like it. Oh, is, is the 45 already counted for the three, or is that still to be counted? Let's yeah, see. Good All right, thank you. Well, I know you need one more tick on the clock for that last three to count, but the team has been hot from beyond the arc. How dangerous can your squad be when Josh Braun and crew are working it from? Three well, I mean, Josh is Josh. He's unbelievable. Um, He's made us go for the last four years, so he's unbelievable. So we're doing a great job. We got to continue to do the things we're doing defensively and not let up. Uh, start off bad off with their offensive rebounds, so we got to give them one shot. They like to go out and run, and, and too many turnovers still, too many careless passes, and 
you know, illegal picks and things like that. We just can't get empty possessions. And I know going into this game, it was, uh, you mentioned it's human nature to let go, let up when you have big lead. And I know your players, their goal is to put together two strong halves. What will be your message at this break? Well, if we don't play well, this team's really good. They're physical, they're big, you know, they'll beat us. We gotta come out and play just as hard as we did in that first half. All right, thank you very much, Dan Marley. The team may have a 42-23 lead, but he is right. Little Rock came firing on all cylinders to start off the first half, and they might have more of that in the second half. So the Lopes got to play some tight basketball on defense, but keep it up on offense. Yeah, tale of two halves so far for the Lopes this season. We'll see what this second half has in store. Kate will be back with more as we continue from TCU Arena with the Lopes on top, 42-23, here on your view. Founded on the belief that the entrepreneurial dream is an engine that drives innovation forward in a global marketplace, the Colangelo College of Business educates and develops values-driven business leaders. Our graduates exemplify the principles of servant leadership and entrepreneurship. GCU's strong Christian identity informs the education you receive, integrating our Christian values with the business curriculum. The college features more than 25 programs from the bachelor through the master's level catering to traditional, evening, and online students. These programs serve a diverse set of aspiring business professionals who not only learn in the classroom, but gain real-world experience operating actual businesses. Our students also receive unique access to Jerry Colangelo's legendary experience, leadership, and connections throughout the business world. Find out more at gcu.edu business. I am Laura Rosoya, and I am majoring in biology with an emphasis in pre-med at Grand Canyon University. The dorm life at GCU definitely helped me build relationships, and I've made great friends on this campus. The quality education here is great. You're testing your limits, but you're going beyond them. It all comes together, the sciences, the ethics, and just everything. It's a beautiful thing. Grand Canyon University, the quality of a private Christian education, the affordability of a state university. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to the Lopes Halftime Show here on Your View, where the crowd in the stands right now is locked in on center court as Christian and Scooby entertain the folks. But it was the Lopes entertaining in the first half with a 42-23 lead over Little Rock at the break. I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks so much for joining us. And I am joined by a special guest now, former GCU men's basketball star Jerome Garrison. Thank you so much for being here. You are a star in the Lopes uniform from 2010 to 2015. What have you been up to since? <laughs> well, uh, after I left here, uh, went overseas, went to Spain for a little bit, uh, played professionally there, came back, um, decided I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay home. Uh, some family things were going on. My mom got sick, so I wanted to stay home, uh, be with her. And now I'm here, and I'm an, I'm an athletic director in Avondale. Um, I love what I do at a school. And imagine Avondale, it's the greatest school out there. Um, we're just doing big things. And it's awesome because I know you have some of your students. You were able to bring them out here to your alma mater. Yeah, yeah they're, uh, they're probably getting snacks now. Hopefully they don't get too much. But uh, they've been having a great time. They've been here since 2 o'clock today. I'm tired. I've been running around with 13 uh, junior high age kids. Uh, but it's been an amazing time. Uh, what GCU is showing these kids is, is amazing. and. They're actually allowing them to dream. Um, so I'm excited to see what they do when they go back to school. Speaking of dreaming, I think sure when you were a player here, you're one of the few who were present during that two, Division I, Division II transition. What was it like when you found out your sophomore year that GCU was going to be Division I in school? It was amazing, honestly. Um, when I came here, Brian told me we were going to do that. But then to see it, it was like, <laughs> this is a dream come true. Um, so I'm just excited. I'm glad I'm here. Uh, I'm glad to see what it's become. You know, when you're kind of on the ground, ground floor, you don't get to see all the success and everything that happens. So it's good to come back and just see everything going on. I'm proud of it. And in a short amount of time, GCU has gained a lot of respect on the college landscape nationally. Yeah. Are you 
surprise or does it just uh, GCUA to go out there and do that so so much so yeah. fast? I'm not surprised at all. No, my, my first year here we built an arena. Two years later we added on to it. So I'm not surprised by what they do. They're going to do some great things um, in the state of Arizona, in the nation, and honestly in the world. So I'm not shocked by anything that they're doing. Um, I'm just glad I'm a local. Now I always ask the players what do they think of uh, Coach Marley, but they he's still in charge of their playing time, so now you can really dish okay. on it. What's he like? Uh, nah, Coach Marley, he's cool. He's a great guy. He's intense, you know. He's um, He demands your best. So as an adult now, outside of the college world, I understand the messages he was trying to teach me. Um, and what he's teaching these men right now, they won't know it until they're gone, that uh, he's just challenging them, and he's trying to get them to be their best. So uh, he does a great job at that. And Josh Braun just set a career high with 22 points in the first half. He was a red shirt freshman when you were here. What was he like as a person and as a teammate? You know, Josh, he was hurt. He had gone through a lot of injuries. Um, me and him spent a lot of time in Bible studies and prayers, uh, just saying, you know, God, work it out. And uh, he never lost his faith. That's the thing about Josh Braun. If you never take anything else from him, that man's got some serious faith. And so what he's doing right now in his career, he deserves it. And I'm not shocked by it. And uh, I'm not surprised by the game he's having. I told him I was coming, so I think he's just trying to show out. Yeah, and I think that you two probably are fast friends. He's yeah. very well spoken, you as well. So thanks so much for joining here. We wish you, your family, and the students you brought tonight the best of luck. Thank you so much. And of course, while you're here, a shout out to our alma mater, Mountain Point, right? Oh yeah, Mountain Point. Pride all day long, and my school, Imagine Avondale. I love you guys. All right, lots of shout outs here, but the biggest one, of course, to the Lopes, who have a 42 23 point lead at the break, and a little Christian Scooby chant going on here at GCUS Arena as well. It was a great first half, a great halftime show, and now, right after this, Scott and Barry will be back to recap the highlights and score and let you know what's in store for the second half. Stay with us. I've been to other colleges, and GCU is the most student-friendly campus that I've been in. I work full-time, I have a young family. Coming to class at night after work has been perfect with my schedule. It allows me to still, you know, work a, a 50 to 60 hour week, but also come to school. I could have gone online, but I like the in-class experience. I work full-time, and I'm also a parent, so having evening classes have been the best option for me. Well, my favorite part of the program has definitely been the students and the faculty, um, especially the students. Our cohort has been really close and we've become friends even outside of class. We all have a relationship now and it really helps you get through the program. The professors have all been great. The focus on the individual students is unlike any other campus I've been in. What I've learned throughout my curriculum here at GCU I've been able to apply on, on multiple levels. It is one night a week, so it's a lot easier to attend classes, especially since I like the in-person interaction. I know this knowledge is gonna help me. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Lopes on top of the Trojans, 42-23 at the half. Barry Buchel, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth, and an outstanding crowd here at GCU Arena to see this Josh Braun show. <laughs> it was the Josh Braun show. Uh, the mayor is doing his darn thing out here tonight. I mean, he is playing on the defensive end. He is knocking down the outside shots. Getting everybody He's taking water. to the hole. He's doing everything with tearing the tickets and, and selling yeah. the popcorn. Let's take a look at our opening half highlights. We begin with Little Rock. They came out on fire. Ben Marcus, their first six points in the game. Yeah, a little nerd about GC early on. Marcus was having his way going to the rack. Six quick points, like you mentioned. And then Keontae Vernon with the touchdown pass here to his fellow big Blumbergs. But the only thing Blumbergs did was run the floor there in that first half and get that easy bucket. The JV show started to take over after that. That little flare screen from Martin gets him an open shot there. He knocked down the, the triple. And then another one here. 
Uh, in transition, Shaq Carter, dual penetration, finding the open band on the perimeter. Always good to find Josh Braun. He cans it, and then Lottie Dottie to the hole all night long was his theme. I'm just going to take it hard to the rack. That front fearless freshman. And then I love this one by Shaq Carter, because it's right after he got toasted to the hole, he decided to come right back at Lottie and then drove him to the basket. But he's got four points in the first half, and then one more time, it's Benson out on the top. His first three. Everybody was raining threes, it seemed like, <laughs> at one point out there. And then another one by the mayor. He knocks one down. And then Jones with the nice little lefty in the lane here. That was a thing of beauty. Keontae Vernon working hard out there. Wasn't always working smart, but sometimes you just get lucky rather than good. He tips it out, and then they give it right back to him off of a funky bounce off of someone's side 16. Look at the three-point field goals. 0 for 7 is Little Rock. 6 of 11 for GCU. 56% from the field. Just about 26% from the field, Little Rock. They've had the open looks. They just have not been able to put the basket, ball in the basket. Well, a lot of it has to do with the way the defense is defending them. They're really pressuring. They're communicating well. They're switching everything. Just a two assist in that first half for Little Rock. they got to be better. Now it's a 35-17 first half lead. Robert Morris, 48 to 28, 42 23. What's the second half going to look like here? Well, hopefully they weren't watching cartoons in that locker room. They got in some game film, and they and the coaches got that cattle prod out and said, "We've had sluggish third, uh, excuse me, starts to our second half. We must come out there with a better intensity." All right, we shall see. Kate will be back with more as we continue our halftime festivities from GC Arena here on your view. to BSN degree online doesn't have to be without the college experience. Finding your purpose takes support from those around you. GCU's leadership offers over three decades of experience delivering our accredited RN to BSN program 100% online. Graduate in as few as 16 months learning from full-time practicing nurse faculty in small classes. Integrate your education with your faith and Christian worldview. Find your purpose online at Grand Canyon University. Private. Christian. Affordable. Visit gcu.edu. I'm Dominique. I'm a student here at Grand Canyon University studying hospitality management. My hospitality courses here are giving me a high quality education from professors that I know have been successful. Being able to work while I'm in school has enriched my college experience. I feel like I know where I'm going and what I want to do. I've gone through things I can't necessarily be taught, and so that paired with everything that GCU is doing for me, I feel like, you know, is setting me up for success. To have someone say, like, I want you, that's like a lot for someone like me. They're changing people's lives. By changing my life, now you changed my little brothers and sisters because they saw that I went to college. It'll just be, you know, my greatest accomplishment, not just because it's a diploma, but because, you know, I did what no one really thought I could do. When they say, find your purpose, they mean it. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back to GCU Arena, where the Lopes have a 19-point lead over Little Rock. Little Rock came out firing hard in the first half, so we'll see what they have in store for the second half. Meanwhile, the Lopes, their goal today is to put together two solid halves. They've yet to do that so far in this young season. The players working on a little bit better ball control, several turnovers in the first half, but no problem for Josh Braun as all eyes were on him as he set a career high for a number of points in a single half, leading all scores right now with 22 points. He was hot beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Shaq Hart only had four points to his name coming into this game. Now six points coming off the bench. Casey Benson with five and Keontae with three. Meanwhile, leading the way for the Trojans, Ben Marcus has six, along with Andre Jones, also six to his name. And now we will get back to the action here as the Lopes. Well, I'm guessing they hope for even more from Josh Braun. Guys, I try to talk to Coach Marley every game and ask him something new at halftime. But I don't know. It always just comes back to the mayor, you know? Can you explain it? All roads lead back to the mayor. Yeah, well, the thing I like about Josh is he got 22 points that half. Yeah. He didn't force a single uh, shot. Played within himself. 
for the most part, his teammates did a nice job finding him when he has his opportunities and he gets a guy trying to close out in rotation. If it's a bigger defender, he takes it to the hole. If it's a smaller defender, he sets him up on the perimeter, like the flare screen he got from Martin. Doing a really nice job from three. And also love the way that they're doing a the job defensively, guarding the three. Little Rock 07 from behind the arc. Now, some you can say, hey, they had good ones, they just missed them. Others you can say it's because they were desperation threes after the Globes had played 28 or 29 good seconds of defense, and they had to fire up something that the Lopes wanted them to take. Little Rock inbounds, Ben Marcus. For Lottie, proud to remain on its feet until the Lopes hit their first bucket of the second half. Oh, my. There's a turnover early. Benson takes it. Off the glass and in, the fans can take an early seat if they win. That was a gift by The Rock. They just gave it right to Benson, right out there, five feet in front of the top of the three-point line. Easy steal and finish. Trojans have seven turnovers. Knocked down by Rare and Vernon. Well, they told Jones, hey, we're going to have a block party down here underneath your basket, and you're the guest of honor. Come on down. and. Jones went on down there and, and got his stuff swatted. Baseline, Marcus almost got it picked again. Marcus around Blumberg's, swarmed by Vernon. Back out, over the top, Oscar Freyer. Oh, he gets fouled. They probably saw the earlier flight path that Oscar has been known to take. Yeah, he, he's watched the tapes. <laughs> They've seen the YouTube videos. They weren't about to give Oscar Frere a free runway right down the middle of the floor, taking off, using the entire runway to elevate and detonate. They fouled him out early. Look, he got a head of steam right there from the mid-court strike. <laughs> he said, not on my watch. You go to the line and earn those two. I love that. Elevate and detonate. I stole that one. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I steal a lot of stuff. Yeah. I don't give anybody credit for <laughs> stealing <it> either. <laughs> Probably some copyright. You steal my favorite, Mark. <laughs> Come on. Well, you know. Come on. I just kind of echoed what you said. I don't know if I was stealing since you're sitting right no, next. No, I didn't say favorite, Mark. I thought that was solid. Oh, no, no, I didn't steal that. Oh, yeah. I thought yeah, you might stole it from you. Yeah, no, no, that was mine. I don't yeah, know how solid. I came up with that one, because I, I never liked that oh, show. Yeah. The show always freaked me out. That robot kind of yeah. freaked me out. I didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good that you all grew it. Still afraid of the flying monkeys and the Wizard of Oz. I still don't like watching that show. Flying monkeys, yeah. Benson takes it. Braun looks like he got a hand or something in his eyes, kind of. Tighten it off right now. Got a hand on it. Yeah, but he's rubbing that right eye. He's Josh Braun. He's trying to gather that back up. That might be the only thing that stopped. They poke, poke him in the eye. But Lumbers, I mean, how many times have we seen this kid in this game tonight not secure that basketball? Really yeah. sloppy pass that he just tried to one hand over there. 11 turnovers and the travel by KJ Gilmore. These turnovers starting to pile up though. They've yeah, Coach they got Marley. to tighten that down once they get into conference play. Yeah, he, could, he could, probably could have showed us a picture of Coach Marlin that they showed over here. Is he just saying pass the ball with two hands? Make sure it reaches its destination. How do you hit the floor hard? Lumbers turns. Freyer, he wants three. Short. Lumbers got a hand. It's loose. Picked up by Lottie. Jay Lottie. Look at that double drag across the top for Lottie. Gilmore inside. Mont Premier. Muscling his way back. Jones pulls down, drives baseline back to Mont Premier. Tries to go around Braun, pulls back out. Lottie, Lottie with a sweep move around Benson, but stoned by Blumbergs. That's where the big man's presence is felt. Benson turns to the crowd. Benson's been spoon feeding Braun this time. Braun spoon feed Benson. Do we have a killer B situation developing between these two? Time out, Little Rock. 
Four for four for Casey Benson from the field. Two of two from the arc. Ten points. And now, Los fans, get your little ones ready. 47 23. One more time here. And I don't know how you lose Casey Benson, but there was someone slow in transition, tr trotting, jogging back. And that'll fire a coach up really fast if you're not going to hustle back on defense. And the team gets burned for a three as a result of it. Ron and Benson, 32 points, 12 for 12 from the field, 7 of 7 from the yard. Give that 12 for 12 and ask us. Here's your chance to catch head coach Dan Marley and the GCU men's basketball team up close and personal. Get your holiday power pack for games against Norfolk State on the 20th, San Diego on the 25th. How about Mississippi Valley State on December 18th and Longwood on the 21st? The power pack, $40 for the first one bought, $20 for each additional. Plus, it's premium seating, and if you purchase a holiday power pack, you get priority weights for season tickets next year. Call the box office at 602-639-8979 or log on to lopestickets.com right now. Some dudes are doing a Simba cam here tonight. People are holding up their, their babies over their heads with two hands. And I'll tell you right now, if they can do that with Josh Bryan. Grab him off that bench and hold him up over their heads with two hands the way he's been playing like the king out here tonight. The king's a bit. You can hold me up. You think you can hold me up? I got, I got bad shoulders. Oh. I, don't, I don't know if I can do <laughs> But Casey Benson, hey, he's lighting it up out there. Not to be out done with Josh Brown perfect from the field. Casey Benson's out perfect from the field, too, by the way. Thank you, Keontae Vernon. There's a couple guys I want to see here have some good minutes here in these next eight before they might find themselves on the pine the rest of this game. And Vernon's one of them, Frere's one of them, and, and Blumberg, he needs to have a good second half. Jones leaves it there for Gilmore to his right. Now to his left. Kicks back out Jones for three. Connects. Yeah, that's what a timeout does right there. Chance to get on that coaching pad and draw something up for him. Players help him out, help him get an easy bucket. Jones with nine leading the Trojans. Benson, Braun, Freyer, Benson, far side, driving baseline. Swarm there. Coach Marley called a he called, he called timeout from the bench there. It was interesting that they set a screen to send Benson to the baseline, but he got double creamed down there. When you have that baseline and two defenders on you, boy, it's a like it's like three guys in a trap. Look at this one more time. Benson, he drives hard to the rack here. All of a sudden he's down here. He's he's swarmed up and oh, yeah, oh it's down. Casey Benson. Heads up play by the fifth year Sydney you said I got nothing down here. Yeah, can't I'm ready to go out of bounds. Can't sling it with my right hand from underneath the basket. Don't want to risk a turnover because we've already had plenty of those. Let's burn a timeout. Heck, we're up 21 points. Probably not going to need that one anyway. So prayer now to inbound. Well, this is where they're really good. It's baseline out of bounds plays. Let's see what Coach Marley drafted. Kicks back out, Vernon. Quickly to Blumberg. Pulls down beyond the arc. Vernon quickly. Benson. Braun. Pulls. Oh! Draw the foul. Nice move by Josh Vernon. He's so crafty. He knows you're not allowed to let him shoot a three-pointer. So he goes hell of it out to that corner to run him off that three. Just a little head and shoulder fake there. And once he gets him in the air, the defender's at Josh Braun's mercy. Gets his body into him. And he's going to go to the line and, and try to get the three the Old-fashioned way from the ultimate the line, trying to knock down three three-point shots, uh, three free throws. I remember his good buddy doing that on more than one occasion last year, Dwayne Russell. Dwayne Russell, you're right about that. Yeah, he he was really good at getting guys backpedaling. Then he snaps back with the dribble as they approach to close back out onto him. He throws that shot like he's going to shoot it, and now they're completely out over their skis. They run into him and he goes to the free throw line. Just two of three. 
from the line. Jimmy Ball getting into Little Rock, number 32, Chris Pinkston. Try to pick it up a little bit, Josh. Come on. <laughs> well, he's no longer, he was going to struggle from the free throw line. Well, three for four from the free yeah, throw line. Yeah, he's, he's missed a couple on the season, yeah, but awful. he's still perfect from the field. <laughs> I guess he's got that to lean on. Who 24 does, points are gone. Who does the official books over there? Paul DeNuzer? No, no, he's too busy. Can't do everything over there. <laughs> Benson. Lumberg's back to Benson. Ooh, careful. Jones call. Second personal. In the ball game number 30, Anthony Black. Anthony Black in the game. There's Paul DeNuzer. <laughs> Unbelievable job. Braun three-pointer. Ooh, what was that? What happened? Man? Well, maybe yeah. they'll say he was passing that ball since it didn't hit the yeah. rim, and they'll keep his perfect streak alive from behind, oh. the, uh, behind the arc. They sent a bit of sarcasm. Well, they did register that at the shot attempt. I say that in jest. He's eight of nine now from the field. Going to get him out. He's hurt the team. Money to his left. Premier. Back out. Up high and Blumberg's. Freya bounce back. Oh, he did a no look and Jackson got a hand on it. Mom Premier leaves it there. Oh, picked off by Freya. Wanted that one back. You know, if you kept a like stat it. of how many steals and deflections on a per 40 minute basis, I think he'd be amongst one of the D1 leaders in the country. Freyer doesn't get the bounce. Lottie, near side. Gilmore, oh, mom premier. <laughs> Freyer can't believe it. He's like, hey, I was d up, and this big guy comes over and just knocked me. What else was I supposed to do? That's all right, a big guy like that. Time out on the floor. 49-26, let's send it over to Kate Longworth. Well, guys, as we've been talking about it since pregame, throughout the game, and uh, a little bit at halftime with Coach Dan Marley, the Lopes right now trying to put together two solid halves because, after all, the goal is to use these non-conference games to prepare for WAC action. The goal for the Lopes at the end of the season in March is to play in that WAC tournament and take this thing all the way. So let's take a look at the conference competition right now. New Mexico was at New Mexico State last night. It was just a three-point game at halftime, but New Mexico State comes out with the big win, 75-56 over New Mexico. Transfer Zach Lofton had 28 points for the Aggies. I'm sure that's the name we'll be looking in on throughout the season. Meanwhile, Chicago State falls short at Northern Iowa, 82-44 the final there. Seattle University comes up on top, 102-71 over Detroit University. Utah Valley, they've been strong so far this season, and they got the big victory at UC, or rather hosting UC Davis, 80-71 a final there. UTRGV falls short at Texas State, 75-53 a final. And we want to remind you that coming up tomorrow, we will have our eyes on that Seattle University game. They had a big game earlier uh, in the week against Arizona, but we want to remind you about the base game. And you can keep it locked in here at your booth for 7 p.m. tip-off, 6.30 p.m. pregame as the Lopes take on Norfolk State. The Lopes hoping to make it 3 0 after this game and just keep it going, riding it right into Thanksgiving with a 4 0 piece. And uh, guys, it'll be a fun broadcast Monday night. We always have fun with these games as they get closer to the holidays because we get to revisit some of our favorite holiday traditions growing up. And we also get to talk to the Lopes players about how they will celebrate the holidays. In the past, we've learned that those guys from down under, Matt Jackson and uh, Martin. They're experiencing their first Thanksgivings out here, and we know that Josh Braun, the mayor, hosts everyone at his grandparents' house, so uh, it should be a fun one next week. But let's finish off this one strong. No doubt about it. Aaron, three-point picked up by Benson. Yeah, Jared Martin, he's, he's wrapped his arms around fully the Thanksgiving tradition, <laughs> although he didn't throw it out that nobody cooks like his mom, so we want to make sure that was... 
clearly see. Yeah, not the tradition. I think it's the turkey. They say he's got the biggest appetite on the team. Freya! Well, that's what I've been waiting for. Yeah. As good as this guy is defensively blocking shots and doing all the hustle plays on the defensive side, I want to see him start putting games together where he can start being a consistent scorer both in and around the basket and from range. First field goal for Freyer. Five points. Put back. Chris, By Chris Bankston. Yeah, Bankston was following his guy. Burner went over to block that shot. Slapped the board kind of hard. I heard it all the way over here, but Bankston was smart. He just, if your guy goes to the basket to try to block a shot, you go right, right up his rear end and get ready to get the carom and put it back in. Lumbergs pulled down an open look for three. Floats it up and in. Now that was a silky smooth move on the perimeter. In fact, in a few games, he'll probably finish that with a dunk. Once he gets a little bit more experience. Anthony Black. Bounce pass down low. Marcus swarmed. Lonnie's got an open look over Freyer. Heavy. Lumbergs rebound. Nice. Four boards now for Blumberg. Braun pulls down drives. Ooh, he's got a hand on it. Turnover. Ooh, out of bounds. White's ball as Gilmore. Indicated by the official. It came down here. And Josh Braun now. He, he's, got, he's got a neon light on his jersey uh, that all the Little Rock players, only the Little Rock players can see. Because anytime he's got the ball, he is getting a crowd around him. They are not going to let him go for 30 points or 40 points tonight. Well, they're going to reach up over the top. Young Biggs will learn that. Yeah, I think it was Smith earlier in the game. He came in and wanted to make something happen right off, right off that bench. And you get called for a foul up over the back. No oh, arm done. Just a second team foul. He's got that same look. Yeah. Shrugging the shoulders. Open hands. It's an Italian soccer thing. I think he picked yeah. it up on the soccer field. Wow. Oh. You say soccer field? Is it field? Yeah, pitch, field, soccer. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Look at this one right here, though. Okay. Jared Martin sliding those feet, goes over there and takes one between the numbers. Okay. I don't think he loves the contact. I haven't seen a guy get knocked to the floor and then, and then smile hard afterwards as much as Jared Martin does. Up to Jared, back to Shaq Khan. Slowing things down. 13 to go, second half. Carr back to his left, Martin. Leaves it there. Braun, Braun in the paint. Underneath, labor off the glass on a sweet feed from Josh Braun. That was a really nice feed. It was a little dribble handoff, a DHO on the perimeter by Martin that got the whole play cooking. Oliver Black. Kari Harley. Reedus. Harley. Three. Short. Rebound. Picked up by Harley. Drives it. Labor got a hand on it. Go back to this one more time. See, that's a little good DHO, a little screen there. Then Big comes over. Braun with great court vision, awareness, understanding, and where that Big had to rotate from. Finds Labor's underneath and just tapped it off the glass for an easy two. I would really like to see him reach that ball back behind his neck and finish with some authority, but. Sometimes when you come off that bench and you've only been up and down the floor a couple of times, those springs aren't ready to explode the way you want them to. Bankston checks out. Cezanne Carson in the game. Harley connects on both. Pressing. Black. Martin. Oops. Good Harley. Yeah, I think they got black from coming in from behind. Paul Paul and Little Rock, number five, Oliver Black. Fourth personal. Six fourth on black. Ball. Yeah, I, I think that at this point, down 26, they got to leave him in the game. He's a, an anchor around that basket. They got to stop giving up these easy penetrations. Braun, bounce pass, labor. Right hand hooking in. That was nice. It wasn't. 
a real pretty play, but he does a nice job using that big broad shoulder to stream the defender away from the shot. Lonnie for three, heavy rebound. Pulled down by Braun, he's muscled out of bounds. Early. How is that Braun's only second rebound? Seems like he's been all over the glass, but I love this one right here. Once again, spoon feed and <laughs> labors underneath. He took his time because he kind of fumbled the ball on his hip just enough, but smart enough to take his time and gather himself in a shot he's Josh been working on most of his life is a left shoulder turn to a right hand hook as a big and he can't it. Ron goes to the line, a one on one. In the ball game for Little Rock, number one, Andre Jones. Jones in for Harley. The numbers on Braun tonight with 24 points, eight and nine from the field, very effective. Got three assists in the game as well. There's a teaching point why we have an opportunity here. Not a lot of action going on with Braun at the free throw line. If you can remember back to that rare free throw yeah. that was on the flattest side. Look how much distance there is from the ball and the top of the rim. At, when the ball is at his apex when Josh Braun shoots it. That's why he gets that soft bounce off that rim he just received. Rare call. Time on the floor, 60 to 30. It's a 30 point low lead here in their third regular season game. Try to remain perfect on the early 2017 18 campaign. Keep it right here on your view. senior at GCU studying hospitality management. Since the program started, it's already grown so much. There's so many opportunities for students to be able to learn outside of the classroom. We have the golf course, we have the hotel, the restaurant. My professors are industry professionals. It makes me feel comfortable knowing that I'm being trained in relevant information. When you graduate from GCU with a hospitality degree, people know that you're prepared. I think it makes you better equipped to handle any situation. It makes you more valuable, especially here in Phoenix, when there's so many opportunities. The best part about being a GCU student is just the fact that I'm in a community where everyone supports me and everyone wants to see me succeed. One of the things I love about GCU is just the importance they place on servant leadership. I serve in the children's ministry, teaching Sunday school. It's incredibly rewarding. GCU is helping me find my purpose. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Private, Christian, affordable. Visit gcu.edu. Welcome back. Lopes have a 30 point lead and are trying to start the season at 3 and 0. But this is how the season shapes up for the Lopes down the road. They're going to enjoy some home cooking for Thanksgiving. That's right. Their first eight of their nine games are here at GCU Arena. And that other game is actually played here in town. They'll go up against St. John's at Talking Stick on December 5th. And then the team will finally hit the road at Boise State on the 13th. They'll return home for a couple more games on the 18th and 21st. And then it's back on the road at Louisville on the 23rd. And we want to remind you that all home games, you can find them right here on Your View Channel 4. But when the team is on the road, you want to turn that dial on the radio to the Fanatic, 1580 AM, 99.3 FM, 95.9 .9 FM, depending on where you are in the Phoenix Valley. Mike Bauer has you set up with some pregame and postgame remarks from Dan Marley. And then Michael Potter and Tom Kuyper call all the action whether home or on the road and uh, I know the Lopes thankful for that fanatic partnership that brings you Lopes basketball whenever you need it. Readers connects. Yeah great partnership with 1580 the fanatic. Michael Potter with GCU alum along with Tom Piper. These guys do a good job having a chance to listen to the few times but really like their call and I like the way that the GCU has been pounding the ball inside. Oh, 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 oh. Made, I was going to say 24 points and add two to that 26 14 advantage points in the paint. Oh. 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 
such an unselfish player, number 42. <laughs> Labors has come in here now, and guys are just looking for him out of the basket. He's making himself a big target, and he's, he's got sure heat. There's nothing worse than passing the ball to a big who's five feet from the basket and drops the ball. He, those guys don't see it very often. They have a lot of confidence in throwing this young freshman the rock underneath. Little Rock with three assists in the game. The Lopes with 17. Reedus. Cezanne Carson. Black to Jones. Jones. Turn around and connects. Andre Jones. Well, that's a, that's a nice play by Jones. But once again, that's one of those plays where Jones had to do it himself. It's a hard-fought basket. They only have four assists in this basketball game because a lot of the shots that they are attempting are ones like Jones made there. Jones leads the Trojans with 11 points. Frayer, ooh, a hand on it by Oliver Black out of bounds, trying to get it into the flavor. Martin inbound. Frayer, Braun, Shaq Bond. Martin drives into the paint, turns back to his left, runs right into Oliver Black and travels. Yeah, he was all set to make a great spin move there. Black, one of the reasons why they've left him on the floor with these four fouls is he does such a good job of setting roadblocks down there for guys driving to the basket, forced Martin into the turtle. Martin and Jones exchanging some Thanksgiving wishes. Off the glass and in. Cameron nice Reedus. job, Arenas. He just went right at Braun. And that's generally what Braun does to everybody else that he faces. And Reedus just said, I'll take one right to you and see how you like it. Check hard to his left. Back out to Martin. Hands it off to Freyer. Up high to Labor. Labor, heavy air ball. Oliver Black. Shift in momentum here. Seeing some of the same tendencies here in the second half of this basketball game that we saw in the first two. Yeah, Coach Flanagan's team surely wasn't ready to play in that first half. Maybe intimidated by this boisterous cloud, crowd, but they have settled down a little here in the second. Reedus connects for three. I remember Reedus had that great game against Memphis with those 12 points. He's got back to back field goals now. Labor can't put it on. Jones. Double dribble on the play by Jones. Get Benson back in here. Looks like that Fifi you do. We're going to give Oscar Frere a little break. Jack Carr's going to come out. Labor was a nice job. He was working hard. You get Keontae Vernon back out here again. But that was a nice one right there. And they gave him plenty of time to get his feet set, shoulder square. He knocked it down. Casey Benson. Tied by Carson. Mark ran in the game for Little Rock. Martin looked to his left, thumbs left. Hands it off to Benson. Benson in the paint. Bounce pass over to Braun. He pulls back, looks for three. Not there. Pulled down by Martin. Quickly. Braun driving. Up off the glass. Gets the hoop and the harm. Well, wonderful job working the glass by Martin. He gets himself credited with the offensive board. I love this one here. Swing, swing. Catch the defense in rotation. He put him in D for drive. And Josh Braun's so good at absorbing contact around the hole, yet having the muscle and the concentration to finish the play. 28 points in 31 minutes for Josh Braun. Six of seven from the free throw line this evening for Braun. Yeah, John, John's Braun, he, he got the school record. He's closing on a career high as well as he got blown by the hole that time. His career high is 34 points. He did that on January 16th against Utah Valley University. He's only five, excuse me, he's make that, yeah, five points off with a tying his career high. A couple threes from breaking. Reedus with the bucket for Little Rock. 
Fifi in the corner. Eight on the shot clock. Seven, six. Fifi drives. Draws the foul. Thanks. Well, after they got the mismatch with Fifi with the taller defender, the Lopes did a nice job spacing the floor, allowing a dude to work in that space that he had. And he realized I got the split speed to take the taller defender to the hole, get the body contact, and go to the line and make some free throws. In the ball game for Blue Rock, number 30. Anthony Black, for the Anthony Black comes in. Matt, Matt Jackson. Jackson for the Lopes. Sixty-seven forty, the lead. Approaching the eight-minute mark here in the second half. Reedus. Left. Aaron Pass is looking for Carson. Goes out of bounds. Time out on the floor. Time out on the floor. 7.51 to go. Second half. The lead is 27 for GCU. Barry Vitell, Scott Williams, Kate Longworth with you here from GCU Arena. Casey Benson, well, part of that B&B that &B, Killer B connection. He's got uh, what? He's got 10 points, two of three from the arc. That chipped in four rebounds. Yeah, and he runs the show. I mean, he is that extension of the coach and staff. Either it's a heads up play, calling a timeout when he's in a bad situation like he did here in the second half, or just knocking down the outside shot. I love this one right here because he's always out pressuring one pass away, meaning making it tough for the defense to be able to rotate sides of the, uh, the offense, to rotate sides of the basket. Really has a, a lot of stuff to be able to get defensive stops. That's a big reason why Little Rock has struggled to get the ball in the hole with just 40 points tonight and just a, a few made field goals. Is the low pressure is not allowing them to change the sides of the floor. Your percentage will rise dramatically with one change of the, of the ball. It goes up even further with two changes from side to side during an offensive possession. So you've got that point guy out of depth that can cut that down, limit those uh, changes from side to side. It does wonders for what your defensive field goal percentage will be. Jared Martin once again uh, providing a spark coming off of the bench. He's got a rebound in the game as an assist. He's played 11 minutes. Yeah, Jared Martin, he's just a hard-working kid. He's, he's, a, he's that kid that you want on your team, that every team needs, is because he's so unselfish. He plays without the basketball. He's, the, like I say, the best defender on the team. He certainly tries the hardest. He's not afraid to stick his nose in there and take a charge. 7.51 on the clock. Jared Martin and the Lopes looking to go to 3-0 to begin the 2017-18 season. They'll be facing Norfolk State Monday night. Hope you're back with us. 6.30, KO on the pregame show. Okay. Tip off at 7. Can we, can we go ahead and say that this was a sure thing? Why, not? Why would you do that? Because well, they're up 27, total control with the momentum, with under eight minutes to play at home. I'm going to go ahead and give them this one to extend their winning streak now to 10 games, the longest D1 winning streak in college basketball. That's pretty impressive for Coach Marlin. Well, we'd appreciate it everybody it watching to stick around and see what does happen. Oh, well, I'm not saying turn it off. Oh, because they're extremely entertaining. <laughs> Let's send it over to Kate. As a collective sigh of relief for the mayor. Josh Braun did moments ago visit the trainer's table, but he is fine. I'm told it's just a knee contusion and, quote, he will be fine and breathe again. There's the ice in that right knee. Well, well, that might be it for him tonight. Skip a beat. Yeah, that might be it for that might be it for him tonight. They can keep this thing up over, you know, 15 points, which I'm sure that they will. It probably will err on the side of caution, know that they got to take the floor again on Monday night. He's had like 400 knee operations. Fifi do heavy. That's a record, by the way. What is that? 400 knee yeah. I don't. I'm not sure if I'm exactly correct on the amount. Hey, hey, hey. Look at 
Keontae yeah. Vernon up on that glass once again. He got himself four Rodmans now to go along with three assists. Jackson. Jackson. Little handoff, Fifi Adu. Floats it up to Jackson. He swarmed. Oh, he tried to get it out to Nizasi. Jared Martin, but it's picked off and swatted away by Jared Martin. Well, see, Jared Martin doesn't hang his head. The ball doesn't get to him. He had himself an opportunity to knock down a shot of Jackson could have got it to him, but he hustles back, gets into a good position defensively, measures and times the shot, and sends it all the way to the far corner. Jones to inbound. Far side. Quickly inside, Jones turning, and he's stoned. Tipped by Fifi, knocked out by Bankston. It's got to be Fifi, dude, wow. Now this is not the best. This is not Little Rock's best uh, effort tonight by far. I mean, let, let's just be honest. But the the job the Lopes are doing defensively, regardless, has been impressive. The way they came out against Robert Morris in that first half and shut them down, when, and they've done the same thing here to Little Rock in this ball game. Martin Jackson quickly to Fifi Adu. Back to Benson. Jared beyond the arc pulls down. In the corner, Benson driving, loses the handle. But Banks, Bankston got a hand on it and goes out of bounds. We're going to have to hustle here on this baseline out of bounds play because you only got four ticks on the shot clock. Turn around, Jackson. Oh, heavy, but Martin tried to push it out. Picked off. Long three misses. Jackson quickly to Fifi. They do. Near side. Walks back, dribble handoff. Benson. Benson. He turns back. Cross court down low. Jackson. Jackson pulls down. Benson. Inside. Jackson. Down low at the feet. You don't want to pass it there. Well, you don't want to run out of bounds either. Nope. <laughs> That, that's one thing you don't want to do. I don't, I don't think Fifi really wanted the ball down there the way he was trotting down underneath of this. So he was just running out side the perimeter and they just whipped him the basketball underneath there and touched it while he was on the out of bounds line. Turnovers 15 for GCU, 13 for Little Rock. Jackson called. Oh, oh, the low number five, Matt Jackson. Second person. Sixteen foul in the ballgame for Little Rock, number three, Cameron Corcoran. On premiere, leaves it for Jay Ziglotti. Lottie, on premiere. Inching. Nowhere to go. Jones, beyond the arc. He looks to drive baseline. Swatted down by Vernon. Back in, Bankston. Oh, he wanted it, but didn't get it, but he got the foul. Well, one second left to go on the shot clock. The Lopes did an excellent job playing defense there. In fact, it was Vernon that came over and did like a two-hand stuff like when a player's on volleyball and they're trying to get the ball over the net and you got those big players up on the net that go up straight with two hands to try to stuff it back down on the other side. He got the first attempt, but the ball comes right back out to Bankston, and Bankston went hard to the hole the next time, and Vernon had the foul. The way to Arkansas native, Chris Bankston, 6'8 freshman. Under there, wagging his tail. Jackson turns, driving by Mom. Ramir, short, loses the handle. Jackson will pick it up. Oh, get it back to Jackson. I want to see him get a bucket tonight. Burn it. Ah! Third game of the season. I like that right there. 
Keontae Vernon catches that ball down on that baseline, and that's a move that they teach these players in practice. One hard dribble from outside to block with a power finish at the at the rack. And waiting patiently. There's one more time. And I wanted Jackson to get the shot, but Fifi Adosa, I got my big down here who can take one hard power crab dribble to the bucket. Says, get out of my way. He <laughs> even just handed the whole, the whole thing that uh, I looked at was Shaquille O'Neal in the NBA that kind of made that popular when you get a big dunk with your off hand. You hold that hand that down. Hand. Yeah, you hold that hand down as you trot down the floor. <laughs> It's a lethal. Like it's a separate entity or something. You have a little discussion with <laughs> your left hand. I don't know, like, where have you been? Or yeah. welcome to the party? Or I don't know exactly what the thought process Here's is. Here's your power for good. good. <laughs> Ooh, Benson. Jackson. Oh, Jackson's got a mouse on. Throw it into the big man down there. Oh, oh, Coach yeah. right. Wants a mismatch up top here with the do. And Banks, did we see that oh, one? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fifi. Benson. What's Coach Marley doing out there? <laughs> the referee's got this thing under control. Like, oh, maybe we have a timeout coming here. But a nice job by Adu once again getting that mismatch and putting the big in D for drive and taking him to the rack. Timeout on the floor. Time to cool everybody down a bit. 29 point lead for GCU over Little Rock. We'll be right back. Hey Phoenix, it's Thunder Dan Marley, head coach at Grand Canyon University. Coming to GCU was a great move for me. Join Antelope Nation by enrolling as an evening student at our beautiful campus in the heart of Phoenix. Earn your bachelor's, master's, or doctoral degree to take your career to the next level. Engage with industry expert instructors in small classroom settings where you can get the support you need to excel. Scholarships available. See you on campus. Go Lopes. Find your purpose at Grand Canyon University. Visit gcu.edu slash evening. Grand Canyon University's newly remodeled golf course is thriving in the heart of Phoenix, featuring over 7,200 yards of expansive tees and tree-lined fairways, signature par threes, greenside bunkers, premium greens, and a brand new clubhouse and restaurant. Experience a university championship golf course this summer with great rates as low as $15 available now. Book your tee times at gcugolf.com. Back at GCU Arena. 69-40, the Lopes in control. Another great crowd. They having a party up in here tonight. Good looking crowd here at GCU Arena. Students are out. Can you believe it? Abbott should obviously live locally, coming out and supporting their, their school. Hey, the the secret is out. This is the best venue in the Valley to watch a sporting event. There's no secret. Get that I, holiday pack, man. What a deal. I got people asking me for tickets left and right. I know these people I haven't talked to in two, three years. They're glad to be on social media. Jay Williams, can you hook me up? Second personal 10 feet foul. Alan Bankston. Fifi goes to the line. turned up on the rims tonight and that ball goes back iron and down it sounds so nice it does great audio good job Bob best in the business his crew Have we ever missed anything Emmy award winning director all world producer the crew phenomenal game in and game out I said all world, I didn't say old, Mitch. Oh, 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 all world. <laughs> Rich Reed just wanted to make sure he heard that correctly. Oh, uh, that was Chris funny. My eight year old, I'm old too, so I'll never say that. Lopes up 31 in control. The opportunity here in a moment for Coach Marley to 
empty his bench, get some guys coming out. We got Mitri Milstead in that game, and I'm sure we'll see some others shortly that haven't gotten some action tonight. Lanigan getting some uh, players into the game. In the ball game for the Marcus coming in for Bankston. Number 10, Jason Lottie. Lottie's coming in for Cameron Corcoran. Well, I'll tell you what, we got to get Jerome Garrison to come back to some more games. He's good yeah. luck, huh? Uh oh. Jerome and Brandy. Yeah, all those fellow alumni want to come back in here and see what has developed, what they started, the tradition that yeah. they started here with Coach Marley on those early teams. And they set a foundation on how Lopes basketball was to be played presently and in future seasons to come. Oh, up over the top, Marcus. Huh? Martin. You know, Martin can't believe it, but. When you're, when you're up 30, you're going to realize the, the officials are going to swallow their whistles a little bit to get up out of here. So unless there's blood or somebody uh, gets extremely hurt, then they're going to probably let them keep playing on. Yeah, Jared and uh, Jones were kind of jawing back and forth. He's, a, he's tough, though. I think he must have played some Australian rules football. Oh, rugby? Rugby? No, not rugby. Australian rules oh, football. Oh, Australian Two different rules things, football. yeah. That's on late at night, right? Australian rules football. You gotta be tough. Australians are tough. They're not tough. Sankari is in the game. Milstead in the game. You can say, hey, guys from Finland are tough too here. I'm going right back at another big after I got cracked the last time. This time the big one. <laughs> Big B Little on that one. Black does a nice job moving his feet. And forcing Fifi to do into a tough shot as the shot clock was winding down. And Coach Marley's going back to his bench to get some more guys in there. Looks like Blumberg Jess is going to come in on the next dead ball. Through 20 and County. Corcoran. Long three. Fifi. Zankare, Ibrahima, number 13 for the Lopes in the game. From Senegal. Ibrahima, Zankare, bounce pass picked off. Marcus. Doesn't drop, but Zankare with the foul is first. Well, the car he got in his game, and he's trying to make something positive happen down there. And fortunately, that that bounce pass is the slowest pass you're possibly going to throw, and it got stolen and returned the other direction by Marcus in a in a hurry. And it's important for Sankari when he comes in with these minutes to be clean. You, you, you want to be aggressive, but you got to be clean. You want to you want to make the most of this minute 49 ticks. Yeah, I say, well, it's only two minutes, but it's really, it's really important for coach, coaching staff to see him make the most of his time on the floor. Marcus scored the six, first six points for Little Rock in the game. He has won since. Mari Milstead. Hide by Jones to his left, Fifi Adu. Kerwin, Smith, his right. Ibrahima Sankara driving out to Smith. Fouled by Oliver Black. He wanted it badly. Yeah, he took that ball hard to the hole, and I thought he did a nice job getting by the first defender who was going to attack the basket, but he's so unselfish that he's got a dunk. He, he just keeps his eye on the front of that room. He got a dunk himself, but. So unselfish, wanted to get it over to his other big, Kerwin Smith, and he got fouled on his way to the hole. Kerwin knocked them both down cleanly. Nice. Milstead, I like him as a player. He's a real ball hawk, too. You got to watch him. He's a thief in shorts. Jones not there. Picked up by Reedus. 
Jones from the arm. Short. Fifi. Milstead. Drop pass for Fifi off the glass. A two. How did he see it too? I, I thought he was looking at Santari on that far left wing. Somehow he spotted a do right in the middle of the floor. Marcus drives. Lumbers can't believe it. He's like, my hands are straight up, Mr. Official. Why are you calling that one on me? Well, sometimes a freshman just gets a sh the quick whistle, and you have to learn to live with that. But the best thing to do is not complain. Just take a look at it one more time. See, he's got his hands. Oh, no, no. I thought they were straight up, but they were not. They were out more of a 45 degree angle. They need to be closer to 85 up over his head. So, good call by the official. Kind of backed into him, probably brought his arms down. Yeah, that's what happens. They hit you in the chest and you yeah. can't help but bring your hands down. <laughs> that old trick. Work ready. Moves to his goal, Damari Milstead. Oh, hold on, the little silver 10, Damari Milstead. First on Milstead. Well, the Rock getting some free throw practice here. Fifteen to twenty-three from the charity strike. Yeah, a little Rock Hill. They'll learn from this loss. They'll, they'll realize hey, this, this crowd got in their head in this first half. They did not play their game. They, they had such nice ball movement early in the game, and then all of that went away. It became one-on-one -on -one basketball. They, they're going to lace them up and go into the beach in California, play in San Diego. They'll learn and, and be better next time they take the floor, Coach Flanagan's team, and they'll get back to doing what they did against Memphis when they had such a Impressive game leading by 14 and controlling that basketball game for over 32 of the 40 minutes. Kerwin Smith back to the free throw line. It's missed. Two of three now. Bankston back in for Oliver Black. Got a little shot to the face, but he fought it off and connected on the back end. Corcoran. Goodness. It's the longest minute in the history of Division oh, oh, One basketball oh, right here. It just feels like that whistle is getting blown. Every time somebody even thinks about making a move to the basket. Yeah, he, he, he's doing a nice job getting getting these free throws down. That one tried to score it on him, but he's a perfect three for three. Make it four for four now. And, That'll be that'll should do it here tonight. Wow, identical score. Close. Yeah, flip it around. I guess I'm completely dyslexic. It was 75-61 last Monday night. Now it's 76-51. That's a final look to now three and all there. Perfect ten and zero, dating back to last season. NCAA best. Josh Braun, big night, 29 points in 32 minutes. Benson, Casey Benson with 10 points, four rebounds in 24 minutes. Jones led the Little Rock scores with 11. And the uh, Lopes move on to Monday night when they take on Norfolk State. Great crowd on hand once again here at GCU Arena.
to see this one. We'll be back with Dan Marley's post-game press conference. We'll have our player of the game. We'll have our final stats. And we'll revisit Scott's three keys to the game. So leave it right there as we wrap it up from DC Arena after the Lopes to beat the Trojans 76 to 51. Our company is the Comfortpedic Inc. We're a local mattress company here. It's a small family business that my dad started. Now we are providing the dorm mattresses to the most recent dorms here at GCU. One of my professors, he was a professor for my junior year, Paul Waterman, he was the one that started everything. Without him, like, this wouldn't have been possible. I came up with a short presentation, a very a quick business pitch. I presented to Dr. Gibb with my company history, and, and he loved it. So first we started with the hotel mattresses. Brett Courtwhite was very helpful, and um, everything ran smoothly. From there, we began with the dorm mattresses. We asked him what exactly they were looking for in a dorm mattress, and that's when we started to come up with with a prototype, we brought in one of um, the mattresses that GCU currently has. We opened it up. We saw where they needed improvement and, and what we could do best to like maximize a better prototype. And we came up with the mattresses that we have now. And after that, everything ran pretty smoothly, thankfully. You can see the community thriving along with GCU. And just the fact that GCU was willing to buy locally from a company that's only 10 minutes away, you can tell that they really want the community to grow with them. I'm very proud to say I'm a Lope, and I, and I tell it to everyone, like, go to GCU, Lope's up. I'm very, very proud. Lopes win it 76-51. Start the season a perfect 3-0. And uh, the Lopes came to play. Again, another tremendous opening half. Barry Butel, Scott Williams will be joined by Paul Coro and Kate Longworth inside the press conference area. But uh, another fine victory for the Lopes. I love the way they came out with their defensive effort. They're hanging their hat on the fact that they can get stops defensively and translate those two opportunities on the other end. They still saw probably too many turnovers yeah. in that first 13, 14, 15 minutes of this game. They had seven turnovers. Quick, they were unforced. That'll stick in Coach Molly's craw a little bit on the offensive side of the basketball, but you make up all for all of that when you can get it done on the defensive side of the ball. 51% field goal percentage for the Lopes, 27 for Little Rock. Eight of 20 from the arc. Rebounding margin goes to the Lopes. The assist 20 to four and points in the paint, 32 to 18. 29 big points. We welcome in Paul Coral, Kate Longworth inside the press conference location here at GC Arena. Guys, another big, big, impressive victory by the Lopes and 29 huge points by Josh Braun. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, Paul, our Lopes insider, already checking out his work, making sure everything's great online so you can always find that. But for now, we are here with you. And yeah, it was an impressive game from the Lopes, especially Josh Braun leading the way. Yeah, amazing how he came out and basically single-handedly beat Little Rock for a little while there until everybody else joined <laughs> the offense. Uh, he had, what, 19 of their first 25 points. I don't think Little Rock had 19 until maybe the last minute of the half, which is another great testament to the defense. All three games, you know, Dan Marley's talked about defense being the identity of this team, and that's carried through all three nights. This night was the most impressive. I think they, they really never let up. Um, they came out impressively at the beginning of the second half and continued to hold Little Rock down, forcing turnovers, getting in lanes, uh, creating steals to get out in transition, to hold them to less than 30% shooting is really a testament to the across-the-board effort on the defensive end. And some great uh, production from the bench as well. Yeah, he, he can see, continue to see him go deep into the bench. He keeps talking about tightening up, but he hasn't yet. You know, he had 11 guys in in the first half, and I uh, thought that was Shaq Carr's best performance of the season so far. Yeah. Uh, that spell in the first half, he really helped him out at the point and got, got into the offense and set up guys. And then in the second half, I mean, the game was already getting out of hand, but there was a few plays in a row there where they fell, fed Alessandro Labor on the inside. Josh found him a couple times. Jared Martin found him once. Um, and it's just a nice option for the offense to have that post up down there. You know, a lot of times we see Josh Braun as the post up threat um, or Keontae, but now uh, Labor brings that with his size and that soft touch around the room. Yeah, really strong to see, although these are uh, non-conference opponents, but just to see how the Lopes are really stepping up to the task. And Barry Scott, I know you were with us all night calling the action. What stands out to you in this one? 
Well, again, uh, you guys talk about the uh, depth of the of the bench. I mean, that's a huge asset, especially when you get into conference play, to be able to roll out more and more players off of that bench. But guys, 18 turnovers again. They had 21 yeah. against Robert Morris. They've they've got to cut that way back. Yeah, and I know you were talking about those turnovers and that being just a glaring stat. And I know for Dan Marley, no matter how big the lead is on the scoreboard, those are the things he's going to want to really tighten up before you bring in coffee. Yeah, and it's been consistent. I think 17, 21, 18 in the three games so far, that number's got to be, I mean, they were the best team in the WAC at turnovers last year. So it's not even indicative of the way this team usually plays. And once you get in a tight game, that's going to swing the balance the other way. It just creates, it makes it too hard on a good defense to continue to play that way. And Dan will say it better now. Yeah, we'll see what Dan Marley has to say about uh, the turnover issue, but also about a big victory. Richard, thanks for flying in from Little Rock. Appreciate it. Your arms must be tired. Uh, just a really good game. Again, uh, first half came out defensively. Uh, you know, Josh has got to play better in that first half. I mean, he was brutal. Um, but, he, you know, he was awesome. He's just continues to amaze um, what he's able to do. Um, but it was great. I thought everybody played really hard, played well. And I was even, you know, really happy about our second half. We came out on point. Uh, put together a really good 40 minutes again. I think we got to, you know, get a little bit better on our turnovers. Still, 18 turnovers, but something we can work on. But, you know, defensively to hold them to 27 percent, three from 18 um, from the three-point line was good. So, you know, just a great game. I didn't, I didn't see that one. I thought, you know, that team's very athletic and long, and we played hard. Just flying around, uh, you know, when we put that other group in, we can white, which is a switch. Uh, guys get out and deny. Um, really impressed with our athleticism as far as blocking shots. You know, Keontae's really starting to get better at that timing. Uh, Oscar, uh, Jared, um, you know, Robert's got a block. All these guys are, you know, protecting the basket, and we're really moving our feet. Uh, Oscar defensively is really good. Um, so I just think, you know, when, when we play 10, 11 guys, 12 guys, uh, you know, guys don't have any excuses. They're not tired. We can rotate them in, and they really are starting to really, you know, be impressed and, and really uh, take pride in their defense. Yeah, I'm going to keep, you know, I'll keep working with it. Uh, I'm just, you know, Shaq, I thought, you know, I'm kind of Shaq, Damari, Shaq, they both deserve to play. Uh, Shaq's a senior, and, you know, I want to develop Damari, but, you know, Shaq came in and played really, really well in that first half. Um, so, you know, Damari's going to get his chances. Shaq, you know, will continue to work. But, you know, if he plays like that, it's hard to not put him in the game. But, you know, Damari's good, too. So uh, I'm going to stick with the freshman. You know, Roberts is really struggling. But he's going to be a big part of this program for a long time. I, he's very talented. He's going to get better. Uh, Alessandro had a better second half. He struggled in that first half. But, you know, we have guys like Matt and Jared, uh, guys coming off the bench that can pick it up. So um, I'm happy with our whole team, and it's just about winning here. I told them it's, it's not about me, it's not about them, it's about GCU and winning, and that's what we're doing. What's better about what Shaq's doing as the season going? Uh, you know, he's just more focused. He's taking care of the ball, which is good. Uh, just he's a, a good athlete. I mean, he can really penetrate and good passes. He can't be careless. He's got to make good passes. I thought he came in and was aggressive. Uh, getting to the basket, uh, made a few layups, which he's able to do. Um, and then def defensively, if he wants to, he can guard. What about overall ball protection? Not good. Not good. We're not tough enough yet. Uh, you know, Fifi made some really bad passes. Oscar still doesn't understand. Josh even puts that ball in front of him and people take it. So uh, we got to do a better job of being strong with the basketball, protecting it, not making careless one-handed passes. Rob made a couple one-handed passes. We've been working on it. Uh, driving and kicking and getting ready to shoot. So it's just something we have to keep working on. Uh, yeah, you know, Josh, you got to limit his dribbles. He's not a big dribble guy. So, you know, Josh is just, as they come out on him, he's got a pump fake and he can get to the basket, which is fine. But, you know, just get away from a guy and score. Uh, we're going to work on his post-up moves. He gets down there and he gets fouled a lot. So um, he's not doing as good of a job in the post-ups this year, but we'll keep working on that with him. But when he's making that jump shot, yeah, he's got to be able to put it on the floor. And if nobody closes out on him, he can get all the way to the basket. So, you know, what can you say about Josh? The guy's amazing. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Coach Dan Marley, this post-game press conference here after a big win as uh, they win it at 
think my microphone might be a little. You, you take it, Scott. Yeah, no, they did. A, they did a nice job. I, I, I really liked the way they got after it. Coach Marley really liked. Uh, his team's defensive effort. He, one thing that he circled was defending the three. Uh, three of 18 from behind the arc for the for the Trojans. That's a tremendous job. That means they got a lot of those shots that they didn't want to shoot just because the shot clock was winding down and they had to get something up on the rim. All right, let's uh, revisit your three keys to tonight's game. Rock yeah, and roll. Yeah, rock and roll. I thought they did a nice job in transition when they had opportunities to run, but you really got to give the Trojans. That's one area where they did excel tonight. Their athleticism, athleticism and transition defense was really good. What do you bench? Well, the bench did a great job. Not only on the offense with 23 points, it was the defense that came in with the attitude and mentality. Martin taking charges and throwing his body around, getting deflections and everything else, and then pass the rock. It's got to improve. Pass it to a guy that's got the same white colored jersey as you. Seems easy enough. Take care of the take care of the basketball much better than they've done. Coral hit on it, Marley hit on it, Ivan Harpin on it for the last two hours during this broadcast. Al hit it on it over there. Al, the random fan. He's like, <laughs> these turnovers got to stop. That's right. Put an end to it. Who is our player of the game? Uh -huh. hmm. I think you got to go with the big fellow, the mayor. He really? JB for three. Yeah, and it all. You come shot. out and make your first four threes uh, in a basketball game, and you just light the other team on fire on the offensive end. And then Coro touched on it. He was outscoring the Trojans at one point all by his lonesome before the rest of the people joined the party. Vincent really got hot. After a while, he came back and started knocking down shots. But JB, the mayor, was the man. Anything that he threw up was going down. Eight of eight at one point before he finally missed one in the second half. Yeah, he is human. Josh Braun, our player of the game, 29 points, 9 of 11 from the field, 5 of 7 from the arc. And he's coming off of that new GCU school record for made three-point field goals against Robert Morris. Well, the students are out, but this crowd was standing room only. It was another packed house at your GCU arena. It's great, too, other guys stepping up. You know, Marley's going to continue to put Lumbergs in that starting lineup. He, he knows to. what talent he has. It just needs to get experience, repetition. Yeah, you can't send him back to the bench and destroy the kid's confidence. He's got to get some minutes on the floor, make some mistakes, and then learn from them. That's the thing. How quickly can he learn from his mistakes where it becomes a point where you just say, okay, this is not working. Let's go a different direction. I think Coach Marley has a ton of confidence. He sees what this kid can do as far as putting the ball on the floor, knocking it and shooting it with range. But if Labor comes in off the bench the way he played there and, and he has a big presence down low, these guys will really be bumping heads for minutes. Yeah, competition. you got to love it to have a bench that deep. We are back in action on Monday night right here on your view. When the Norfolk State Spartans come to the House of Havoc to take on GCU, great tickets still available by calling the GCU box office at 602-639-8979. If you can't make it to the game, be sure to tune in to the Lopes pregame show with Kate Longworth starting at 6.30. Tip-off set for 7 on your view or online at gcu.tv. That'll do it from here at GCU Arena, where tonight the Lopes beat Little Rock 76 to 51. Please join us again, as I said, Monday night with GCU host Norfolk State. But until then, for Gabe Longworth, Scott Williams, and our entire crew, I'm Barry Butel, wishing you a wonderful Saturday night.